Greetings, mortals, subjects, peasants, to episode 58 of the Strip Poker Night at the Inventory Podcast, also known as our Dungeon of Death, where we make the, the testing characters run through hoops to win our hands in marriage. I'm your host, Spananon, here with my co-host, Namask. Go ahead and say hi. Hey, everyone. <clears throat> Good to be back. And with us today is the man of the hour himself, the proprietor of the proprietor of the Dungeon of Death, uh, Dorian. So welcome back to the cast. It's been a while, and congratulations on your most recent addition to the testing tables. Yeah, thanks. Uh, it's it's good to be back. I haven't been on since uh, since the changeover, so so I'm looking forward to this. Great. Well, good to have you aboard. All right, man, on want to take us away? I guess we can go ahead and uh, get right into the main roster additions. We don't have many. We 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 have steadily caught up. Actually, actually, Dorian, tell us the characters you've made. Oh yeah, oh, oh yeah. And for those tuning <laughs> yeah. in for the first time, it's been so long. <laughs> yeah, uh, so you have quite a lot of offbeat choices. Yeah, a little bit. That's what he's famous for. Mm -hmm. So uh, my first character was I wrote for uh, Navi. I didn't do her art or anything. Uh, after that, I made Eeny Miney from Ace Attorney. I made uh, Sarin from uh, The Last Story. I made uh, Galatea from uh, Galatea. And now on testing, I have Turn Dot from Turn Dot. Always a good decision and really, you know, one of the exemplary developers of all the weird shit that people can put into Spinati and make it a work of love and art. Okay. Well, no one else is going to put them in. There you go. It's a good way of looking at it. Okay. That's the spirit, man. <laughs> all right. Yeah. So, Namask, okay. uh, we don't have many testing or main roster additions this time around, but you can go ahead and introduce us to each of them. Go ahead and take us in. All right, so first off the bat, we have a long time coming, uh, the Dark Magician Girl from Yu-Gi-Oh! I gotta say, it's uh, she has been on and off the testing roster for a very, very long time. Good to finally have her in the game, as delivered by Alchemist 21 and Elucid Light, with Alchemist 21 doing the art. I understand she's gone through some art redevelopment, but she's... Very simple character, very cute. Uh, not really a whole lot of, you know, out, outbound targets, but I definitely think she's one of those characters that the people are here looking for, happy to see her, and good to keep going from there. Yeah. All right, so over to us, you know, Dor you know, Dorian, why don't you, you know, what are your thoughts on our good dual monster Dark Magician girl? Well, yeah. Uh, well, first of all, I think she's really cute. Uh, she's had, like... You know, I, I do remember her old uh, development look and her old epilogue where you would like dance with her all pretty like. Yeah, she uh, and she's, her love. yeah she's. I posted a screenshot so, of it here. Mm -hmm. She's so much better now in the art department. Like she used to just not move her legs like at all, <laughs> ever. I remember uh, that. Yeah, and it was like a huge contentious thing about the time. But now. Uh, she's great. Her posing's a lot better. I like that she like moves around her head on her neck in order to do like a tee hee pose and a few other things. Um, I do wish she had like a flying pose because she can fly, but I don't think she has. She like has one. Uh, I think but, she does it a little bit. Yeah, like a little bit, but like a, one would be not bad. But yeah, I know she like leans and bobs quite a bit in a way that she must be flying. But um, I don't know. I, I think she's cute. And I think kind of the best way to describe her is, you know, if someone told me Dark Magician Girl is in Spinati, they just added her. And I'm like, huh, I wonder what she would be like. This is it. This is what she would be like. She looks like she's from the source. She makes cute references to dual monsters and the series. Uh, she floats around. She's popular. She expands a bit. She's very kind of what you see is what you get on her. And I think that people who are fans of the series and like will get her uh, slightly tongue in cheek references are going to love her a lot. Um, I personally wish that she like expanded on some of her own things in her own ways. Like she talks about how she has a bunch of fans uh she doesn't really go too far into that there's also like the part where she talks about being like an egyptian priestess like 
her opinions just kind of aren't baked too hard into her own dialogue. And so that's just one thing that I'd like to see kind of kind of happen more. But otherwise, I don't know. She's pretty cute. And I think she's a she's a decent add to uh, to the main roster. Ben, how do you feel about our dark magician girl? Never say never, as they say. This girl came on to testing when I was a newbie. She came on like March 2018. Can you tell? Based on that screenshot with the, the totally default hair and the, and the towering forehead. Default eyes. I mean, what a glow up. But it's not like she's been on testing that whole time. She disappeared like a few months later. I think she may have come back briefly just at some like point in the intervening times, years with a different sure. writer. And then that mm-hmm. never went anywhere. And then the original writer and artist just, just came back out of nowhere. Alchemist 21 just reappeared. He's like, hey, what's up? I'm back. <laughs> I'm going to do a right this time. And God damn it, he did. Yeah. Never say everyone, like the people, you know, when they peace out, they're just gone forever. And the, and the character's... A lost cause, because I mean, what a what a what a heartwarming story for her to make <laughs> the cross, right? Yeah, she survived. She made it. Well, like, yeah, she's, knew- she's cute. She's positive. I like her. She's uh, cheery and energetic, and the art's great. Although I must say, as I always say, and will say later on in this podcast again, her hair needs to flip with her head. I posted gifts. There is no debate. Look at it. I know, you did a great job with the hair, but you got to make it face the other way. Come on. This isn't amateur hour. Can't just, can't just come back after four years and only make her hair face one way. It's not good enough. You've lost all your life points. Oh, well. The mask. You can take us into our next character, and I think you can, you can start off with your thoughts. Yeah, um, next character on the main roster is Leon. Uh, Leon S. Kennedy from... Resident Evil. Uh, this is Resident Evil 4 Leon, not Resident Evil 6 Leon, because he becomes very sad. Uh, it's been <laughs> a quite, a, quite a ride. Uh, really fun developing Leon. Thank you, Blue Jay, for the excellent model and your hard work on that. Uh, on the whole, just by all means, I'm still really enjoying writing him. If anyone has any feedback, targets they want to do, just send them my way. Happy to get things going. And with that, uh, that's basically all I can say. Is it's uh, I'm glad people seem to really like him. Dorian, yeah, uh, yeah, I like him a lot. Uh, I first, you know, you gotta you gotta thank Blue Jay. His art is really great. I like uh, I like on his you know his dark T shirt. You have still that muscle definition. I also want to shout out those uh, custom uh, collarbones. I yeah, think those look pretty nice. Sick. Sorry. Yeah, um, like like more characters should definitely have that kind of stuff because it, it, they are cutting really great stuff. Um, I also like that it just his hair is just dipping over his eye. I think that that kind of just adds a lot for like no cost at all. And I don't know. I think I think it adds a lot to his uh, dopey hero side and, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, I like his I was personality. Say pretty boy, but OK. Yeah, I mean, he he does a little bit between all things, you know, a little dopey hero, a little uh, gloomy pretty boy. He 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 actually covers a lot. He's surprisingly kind of tugs, basically squeezes all you can out of Leon into into his personality. I, I think I like that a lot. The, the one thing that kind of bugs me about him is he has like those type of lines where you're like this is referencing a game mechanic and i just i i have a pet peeve for those kinds of lines like i can very much tell like okay this is i threw a fuckload of any hand any hand lines that are all just like resident evil dumb bullshit so it's just like i was like yeah i i wrote wrote all of his generics in in the span of like 12 hours so i was like i fill them in fill them in do it <laughs> yeah, uh, I think he does them a lot better than some people do. He has like his little uh, sows, haze, and dams that he squirts into those sentences, which make them feel more like his opinion than just like an omniscient god's like, this is happening in your game and squashing it in there. 
Uh, one other thing I, I just kind of like is, um, I don't know if this is like uh, something we were never meant to see or whatever, but just in his global case, you know, we have what I assume are his... Um, yep, that's uh, correct. Yeah, so I, I think that that's a lot of help maybe just to kind of it's just a clear obvious example to show to new people like these are the i'm gonna say tenets but i know that that's not the word that we use for them Touch, touchstones i think you can touchstones. Find, i think you can generally find that for any character that i or napsu wrote so yeah i only found them for leon but i'm definitely going to check them out for other characters i i think that probably we should do that more often maybe i should do that for my own characters it's just nice not only for like you know you and your writing dialogue but also just for other people to see and kind of get what touchstones are all about also you know uh you he has some lines to surround that you could respond to too while you're while you're at it oh i'm very bad about responding to lines when i'm not focused on that character i still have i still have probably some eeny lines that i need to get back to eventually probably but you know whatever (laughs) Yeah, I'll get to them when I get to them. Sam, what do you, you know, think? The funny, the funny thing is, you know, it didn't used to be like an expectation necessarily that you responded when someone targeted you. <laughs> so, I mean, this was in like the early stages of targeted lines when they're always targeted all the time. Editor. But people used to make mm-hmm. like targeted line offers, like posts on the subreddit. Like, if you target my character, I will respond with this many lines. <laughs> yeah. There used to be a thing for like Kisa Cathalons where it's like if you win, I will write 20 lines towards your character, you know, instead of like just doing it naturally. Yeah, this was this was before the the bartering system yeah. of, of mm-hmm. trading card points. But uh yeah, I, I it's, it's just kind of considered common courtesy now to uh, to respond when targeted. It was almost like I don't know what the mentality was back then, but I almost want to say it was like a tax. Like, yeah, I made this popular character. Target them, bitch. Like, they deserve it. (laughs) Or, Mm -hmm. like, target a franchise mate. Yeah. Targeting was just different back in the day, especially when, like... I mean, it's kind of why we had the uh, gimmicks were so popular is because that was just a way to get people to target your character. You know, because you would get added to, like, the Google Doc or whatever. You know, and it'll be like... Now I am important. Your character must target mine, you know, rather than just kind of like a natural extension of being here. Well, it's a lesson we all have to learn in life, right? Uh, Being weird is not a substitute for a personality. (laughs) Yeah. But anyway, um, yeah. So Leon, Leon's a lot of fun to write. By all means, please feel free to flirt away, target him. I've been I've be working on it with the mask. We've been trying I, I to know. get out. I know, Sam. Uh, you're, you're a trooper. I, you know, you're a trooper. Keep me honest. Because <laughs> I will shirk my responsibilities whenever, wherever, and however possible. Uh, you seem to have a lot of responsibilities already. So It's called rent-seeking behavior. And to really <laughs> succeed in capitalism, you got to get really good at it. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> I, I've said my piece on Leon. I don't think he's had any major flaws come up in the meantime. So, yeah, definitely go give him a try. He's a great uh, addition to the roster and adds like a really unique male voice. Um, I'm excited to yeah. keep targeting him just as a, as, a, as a new, fresh experience. Also, gay dudes, you want some Leon lines? Target Leon. Easy peasy. There you go. I'll give you my community service. There you go, the so, quid pro quo. There we go. You supply, you know, you supply our community with wonderful, wonderful kiss game models. I will respond to you with dick sucking. Easy peasy. You receive, I receive, you receive. Trade offer. Um, okay, so let's move on from the roster of the main to the roster of the test. Uh, Am I right? I don't think I missed anyone, right? That's all of them? Uh, I think that's, I think that, yeah. I think with the April Fools uh, stuff, the mods were really busy, so probably not like there's a lot of QAs going on. I think uh, Mikan yeah. just yeah, there's hit, a lot of characters uh, that are they're on the cusp of main roster. I guess the section will be right. big next time. I think so. So on the testing roster, um, 
let's go ahead and introduce Rita. So, Spanon, you want to introduce her, or you want me to go and finish this uh, tirade that I'm about to go into? I will. I will introduce the the testing characters. We have wonderful Rita. Okay, now I have to check again. Rita, what? Rita Repulsa or it's Rita, Rita Mordio? From, it's, it's Rita, Rita from Repulsa like Power Tales Rangers or Geo. Yeah. It's it's she's she's from the same game as Estelle. She's one of those Tales games. Let's check. Rita Mordio from Tales of Vesperia. She she is an engineering type. She is she works with something called. I want to say I want to say Aether, but or yeah, it's Air. Last year. A- well, last year comes from, She explains this all. Yeah, last yeah, it's, year, it's pronounced Air. Air. Okay. Have you played this Throw game? Your hands up in the air. No, she literally tells you like first thing like it's pronounced Air. It's not Air, but it is pronounced Air. <laughs> yes, Blastia Creens. She talks a lot about those that that are just sort of like an energy source. She she researches them. They're used for for weapons and for energy and just for all sorts of civilian purposes. I'm sorry. I I, I played mm-hmm. her like a month ago. My I'm a little rusty, but yeah. I was thinking. I was thinking of of Yastola's uh, ether. Okay, it's it's air, air and blast jacrines. She's an engineering type, and she is very, uh, let's say, not interested in other shit. She considers herself the smartest one on the table, and is not particularly concerned with everyone else's uh, piddly little caveman brains. <laughs> Would you agree with that? Well, yeah, no, she's she's definitely got some focus to her. Yeah, one one track mind, except sometimes uh, she will see the woman body and her momentary, just a momentary lapse in judgment will come across her. Oh, yeah, is she, uh, is she written as a lesbian? Yeah, I believe so. That was a bit of a point of contention, and I don't know if that's going to change, but I think... I think she is going to be staying a lesbian at the time of this recording. I don't know why. <laughs> what was the decision, or what was the motivation for that? I don't know. Uh, she was written that way. I don't think that's my point to say. All, all, nerd girls are, all nerd girls are lesbians. There's something in the chemicals. The same thing with Eris. Yeah, so, yeah. Dor- Dorian, because you're, you're our guest, why don't you give us your thoughts on, uh, on Rita and then I can give some, and Spinano can give some. Because if I let Spinano go next, I'm going to interrupt him. So, absolutely, my the way to my sins. You're you're supposed um, to go second, Namasp. I know that's why I'm going second. Oh boy. Okay, so I really like her base personality. I think that she uh, is is working off of something really good. I like that she has different sorts of layers between um, being hyper focused on like her blastia and also having the i don't care kind of elements to her she's got some edge to her she's got some sass um kind of nice against like when paired with estelle who is very 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 sweet um so i think that they create kind of a good a good dynamic uh with each other um uh, i like horse killer once again knocking him out of the park uh with his uh design i really like her stripping poses she always has a little flair something something drawn or something for those and i think that they look really really nice um just uh thinking of some criticism uh i feel like she talks she like dances around what she actually actually does and i'm not sure if it's ever explicitly stated and it feels kind of weird that she talks all about this but i'm not 100 percent sure so if she does it was either not made clear to me or she kind of just doesn't really know i don't really know what she actually actually is researching on like i know the general field but it's like saying i work in nuclear physics like like doing what you know um another thing is like um uh i feel like she undercuts herself too much like she will 
say something that she is genuinely excited about, whether she's talking about uh, Blastia or uh, uh, her attraction to other women or, you know, just formulas she has in her head or something, something she is genuinely attracted about. And then the same line, she will undercut herself and be like, you guys must think that's boring. Uh, Not that you care. I didn't say anything about that. Just kind of drawing back on what she is and i think that that's good i think that makes contrast and i think that that is something you should keep however i think that if she does it in too many lines it just starts to feel like a drag to play with her so what i would recommend is add more lines where she is just has like genuine moments of like enjoying something it doesn't have to explicitly be the game but something and then add more lines where she is undercutting herself, but just split them up so that you can still have that balance, but not exactly, you know, having them always stepping over each other. Also, I think she could just use some more must strip lines. She's using the same ones for stages zero through five, and that's like six stages. And that's just a lot of time to be using the same number of uh, must strip lines. So a few more of those. But yeah, those are generally my thoughts. Uh, Namasp? Yeah, if that is the that. order. Yeah, it, it is It is the secret order. Um, yeah, I think... Uh, uh, that we argue about every cast? Yeah, basically. Um, I really want to like Rita. And I think like the fact that she has a really strong personality is definitely in her favor. I also think that like she's such a little jerk, though. She's like such a jerk about like all these little details about like her personality and like the world that she's from. And I think that's fine, but it's kind of like, I get these complaints about like Natsuki sometimes, right? That's like, Oh, well she's just like too mean. And I'm like, Oh, okay. But I think having more opportunities to like explore more nuance with her is probably not a bad thing, but I also feel like, I don't know. The model's really cute. I think there's a lot of stuff in there that is good. I think she just fundamentally needs more interactions to really flesh her out. And I think the big problem she's running into is it feels like when she came out, she was really active in targeting. And right now, it doesn't feel like she's as responsive or engaging with other characters as much. I, I think, like, the other thing is, like, it's just sort of... No, it, it's kind of like, I'm not really sure who this character is for. Not from the standpoint that she's not well written, but just in the sense that, like, okay, so she's like a techn like she's a technology person. That that's cool. She interacts with you know like sucrose or whatever. It's like okay, they're all different, they're all interesting, blah blah blah. But it's like okay, so this is a character who's exclusively interested in women, who fits in this niche, and is kind of a jerk. It's like it, it's I feel like it's going too narrow in scope, without committing as hard into that niche as a character could like like for instance like i think if you're going to really build a niche character you either need to go super super hard into that niche or you need to kind of diversify the appeal here i think the fact that she's being written as a lesbian feels like kind of like a miss i don't like because i think when you have like a gay character that is like purely like a gay character i think it's somewhat important that they come from a canon where that is the case because it just means like, hey, that's like a thing for these people and you want to protect that. Like, I totally get that and I think that's fine. I think it's another take a character who could potentially be interested in both sexes and then block them out from one sex. And I think to me, that is a risky decision that doesn't play off well compared to having some like, you know, later stage attraction to, to both, which, you know, or at the very least having them be attracted to the player. I think if I was going to get feedback, that's the kind of thing I'm like, you're, you're playing for the dialogue, but if the character's not particularly, like when I say not particularly interesting, I definitely think that's like a way hostile way of phrasing it, but she's not particularly like weird in a way that you're trying to decipher what's going on. She's like very much there, very self-interested and very focused on you know particular things so it's like it's very hard to get into her character and really enjoy her when she's at the table and i think that's separate from her being nice i guess 
I know I was kind of rambling, but the long story short is like, I think the base here is really good. I do think she's got some room to grow to be more generally appealing. Yeah. So I played Rita a month ago, but I do have notes. I took some notes. The first note reads, asshole. <laughs> asshole talks a lot. <laughs> so, okay. So what, that, what that's referring to is that on her strip stages especially, she gives a lot of like preemptive explanations. And what, so she's always talking about like blastocrines and air and stuff because it's her research. It's, it's what she's passionate about. And I'm glad that the writer had the awareness to go, okay, no one knows what that is. They're all going to target and ask about it. So I'll just have her explain it in generic lines, what she does. And she's like, and she herself is like, okay, nobody knows what I'm talking about. So I'm just going to explain it, which is fine. It's kind of funny, but it's, it's also very matter of fact. I understand what it's trying to accomplish, but it's, it's just so dry the way she explains it. It's like, okay, it was a lore dump. I get it now, but uh, I feel like I still didn't really learn anything because it's not something I can really you know, uh, jive with <laughs> vibe. But uh, let's see. Like she had, I, I think the other thing is that the, the design doesn't really scream like asshole. She looks like a cute, fun, you know, chipper engineering girl. But she's like, yeah, I, I fuck all you people. I, I don't even know why I'm really here. She definitely doesn't look the part. Even in this GIF I posted, she does look genuinely interested. I guess that's because she's doing her research. Um, like, she's got good faces. She's got good art. Her art and lines generally work well together. Like, they... Uh, I, I, I don't. Some characters have sort of a disconnect between the the writer and the artist in terms of what they want to get across. She had some really fun deadpan posing and sarcasm and those sorts of lines, but I kind of agree with what Dorian said and and Amass to a uh, the certain extent that she just never kind of came around fully into like enjoying herself. She got very tsundere at times, and sometimes she seemed kind of into it near the end, but. Yeah, it was. It was. She never. She never felt like she fully went all the way in that direction. Into, it doesn't. Didn't feel consistently into it. It was like kind of like in, into it despite things, you know. It, yeah, it. It seems mm-hmm. like. I don't know. It, it seems like the writer didn't quite know where they wanted to take her. Or are my feelings. Like Estelle. Estelle, I get. She's like the sheltered, naive princess, but she really right. wants to learn, and she's like really open about it. This character, she's like an asshole, <laughs> and I don't, and I don't really get what you're going for. I'm like, I'm not saying there's no potential, but she takes a long time to come around, and even then, she doesn't quite go quite all the way around. So I'm not sure what you're looking for. So, but speaking, she of, has promise. I, I I agree with that. I definitely think that it's like it's also this is definitely not. Um, I like blanking. This is definitely not Cypher's first character. So I, you know, Cy- Cypher wrote Fina and also, you know, uh, God damn it, Estelle. So I think. You did? I he thought a uh, horse killer. The, uh, he, he, he adopted Cypher took over. Oh, he adopted together. her. Okay. Yeah. I haven't tested her in a while. I'll, I should do that. She's good. She's really good. Um, Anyway, so speaking of assholes, let's move on to the next jerk on this list. So over There's a lot of Cap- assholes today. Yeah, there are a lot of jerks on this table. All right, so talking about Cagliostro. So Dorian... Uh, Wait, listen, you know, I'm, all, I'm all about jerking off and assholes. Sure. So here's Cagliostro, uh, written and drawn by... This is my Sin alias, who has a bounty of characters that he's worked on, such as Takatoshi, Barbara, et al., Highly, highly interested in this character, Dorian. Why don't you go ahead and take it away? If you, if you, if you, if you didn't get enough uh, from Miko about like male historical figures that have been changed to cute mm-hmm. anime girls, here's another or one. Incredibly smug and self-conceited. And I small. cannot believe Cagliostro is not a fake character. Is like the statement that I'll make. Yeah. I'm like, I can't, I can't like believe it's not. 
It's like, I can't believe it's not Infinite Blade Works. Which appara- apparently this has like, a, like an Arxis fighting game or something. So she's not, <laughs> she's not nobody, that's for sure. Yeah, no. Um, yeah, so I played her, and honestly, um, I think it was pretty established from the get-go that I was going to like her, since, you know, she kind of reminds me of Eni and of uh, Turndot. Uh, I think she's super well-written. Uh, I love, you know, that she has, you know, at first the very sweet and cutesy personality, and then I, I think he does a really good job of, like, foreshadowing and having those tiny little breaks in in the, you know, facade uh, before she goes, you know what, fuck it, I'm actually a super huge bitch who's obsessed with myself, and you're gonna love it. And I don't know, I love that transition, and the I, I, I love it when characters show little breaks. I don't know, it's it feeds my soul. Um, it just reminded me of Enid. Yeah, I know, right? Um, but no, uh, she's super great. Uh, I laughed a lot. I think she's really funny. I like her um, masturbation sequence. I think the new chair looks really good. I, I like that she pulls out a little mirror just so she can stare at herself the whole time. Um, I love her pose. Where it's a bit. <laughs> she is two hundred percent committed. I- I think the bit is really good. I think like the masturbation mm-hmm. thing, like no one's ever masturbated themselves unless it's like some weird clone thing. But in this case, she's yeah. just like, it could be a weird clone thing if I wanted it to be, but it's just going to be a mirror right now. I have perfected my mm-hmm. body. Therefore, I don't give a fuck. And I'm like, you know exactly. what? I can, I can respect that. That makes sense. Mm-hmm. That's beautiful. Like, it's like if you had if you had your ideal form, if you had like your ideal opposite sex form, like you would definitely just be like, ah, oh, yes. <laughs> But anyway, it's yeah. uh, what what an interesting character. Um, Dorian, any more thoughts yeah. on that? Uh, yeah, just a few. Uh, I love her pose where she's pinching her brow. Um, I think a lot of people have tried for like the face palm pose. I don't think anyone's ever gotten it like one hundred percent right. But I think the the pinch of the brow looks really great on her. Um, I think she could use italics a little more in her early stages to to mess with her language a little bit. Um, and I think also italics could be useful. There's there's this one bit just before she masturbates where she starts like making fun of her own cutesy, you know, section, and she starts going like you know making fun of the cutesy voice, and then going like, yeah, I can't believe you guys fell for that. And I think like that could be helpful to differentiate between the voices. I also think she could probably use some more filtered lines because I feel like uh, she could, you know, have some stuff on that because the filtered lines I did see were all questions, but, you know, they're they're not going to be responded to. So I feel like if instead of adding more questions or like statements addressing others, if she just had like general comments that didn't feel like they needed a response, that could that could help uh, make her seem a bit more, you know, lively and use the filters really well. Because she seems like a character who, who's got some opinions about other people around her. Yeah. So how about you, Namas? What did you think? I, you know, this is interesting, right? Because I was like, I was very, very critical of, Rita, I think, relative to as critical as I can be. I really like Cagliostro. I think she's really fucking funny. And I think it's just like, I think it's because it's like so over the top and crazed. It's not like suddenly mm-hmm. like, I'm going to be mean to you. It's just like, I just gonna do whatever the fuck I'm doing. Like, it's just like, okay. <laughs> and I think it's just like, I like, there's this, um, there's this post that um, like, Sin alias is put in the Discord on occasion. That's just like a picture of like, you know, Cagliostro looking super cute. That just like the expression changes to like, yeah, I'm like, a, I'm like, I'm actually like a fucking monster. <laughs> I just, I don't know why. I just really enjoy that. And I think, I think Cagliostro is a really fascinating character. I do think that like, there's always a risk with a character like this that she comes across as like too young, which pivots really nicely when she is not in like, when she like drops the act, which is good. Otherwise, yeah, I mean, I think I think she's good. I think the masturbation scene or nice for you know 
nice masturbation climax scene, as as a scholar once said. And I just think there's just more to come with her. I think the biggest thing is because she's so interesting to interact with, I feel like there's this avenue for her to just be like an absolute dick to like other characters in ways that you don't usually see. And I think it's like a lot. I, I don't know. I think it would be great to just see more of this character. I think that's the highest praise I can offer. Is like I really enjoy the personality, and I just would like to see more of it in the, in the game. Are there that's are all. there characters that really tear others apart on like a sexual level, like a sexual psycholo- psychological level? No, and that's why I think this, uh, it's just like yeah. it, not really. Like I think there's like an I think Revy. What about like Streaming Chan? Does Streaming Chan do that? I know she can get kind of kind of bitchy on that. Can. I don't know if streaming can like streaming chan is doing it for shock value, I think. Mm-hmm. But like I think Cagliostra could just be like make you feel inadequate, which you know, I think yeah. um I think Nagamimi also does that too. So it's just like why did we oh, get yeah, two Nagamimi. How did we get two of these characters in like under three months? Like what is going on? But anyway, there's something in the water. I do think the body detailing on her is good. It stops her from looking like a child, which is, you know, kind of the bare minimum you expect. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I just think there could definitely stand to be more targeted lines from her and more filtered lines. That's going to be my sponsorship thing when she goes up. But the, the base is here. The model's really cute. The concept's really interesting. Uh, spin on, what do you think? This was definitely another case where I went, you know, I really want to see uh, her and, or she and Nagamimi go at it. Yeah, I want to see them fight. Like, that's, that's like what I want. I want, like, Nagamimi on Cagliostra violence. By violence, I mean, I want them to bang. <laughs> she and, and Hu Tao also are already going at it. I, I'm 100% here for it. I just, well, it's, yeah, Hu-ta- we Hu-ta- all know like, how you feel about, like, like, spicy. Accosting. Yeah, I just want the like, girls that, that just tear you down. Fuck fight. In the I want them to fuck fight. That's what I want. I just want them to fight fuck. It's all good. We all we all know how you you know, we all know your type, the master. I know. Anyway, if only, if so, only she were if only she were Chinese instead of Italian, she she'd be perfect to mask bait. You know, the Italians are you know the Italians are just uh, the Chinese of of Europe, really. I don't know what that means. I don't. I don't either. No, you got me. It's it's It's, uh, it's provocative and and you know thought provoking. No, probably has something to do with noodles. Powerful empire, but are now just Ah, a mockery of themselves. Yeah, actually, wow, it it works. And noodles, (laughs) and noodles, a a shell of their former glory. Yeah. So anyway, what do you Uh, think? Let's see. She speaks in third person a lot. Well, that's Which, kind of the point, right? It's like that's like the, the yeah. That's I mean that's that's a that's a thing in Japanese to show a character is very immature. Look at this person. I, I find I I I wonder how I should capture that because uh, I watched like the the sub again and and Jura does that constantly. Mm-hmm. She always refers to herself in in third person. That's so weird. But she doesn't yeah, do it doesn't really belt. translate to to English that well. For at least for Jura, it'd be weird. Well, yeah, and, and yet here she is doing it in English. Yeah. So I wonder. I think sometimes. it works for Cag, like because she's so like self obsessed. I think it works where it probably wouldn't work for like a more much, you know, less self obsessed but still immature character. You know, it's it's hard to. Uh... I don't know. It's it's hard to. I, I wonder, like, what's a good way to to translate at that, or like, what's a really ch- good way to have like a childish way of speaking in English? Just I don't know, using simple words. Yeah. Um. Maybe like emphasizing saying, "Well, I yada yada yada." You know, it's emphasizing the me. You know, I don't know how to do that in text form, but I feel like that would work. Yeah, just being whiny. Yeah, just being whiny, that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Moody. Yeah. Impatient. Impulsive. Childish. Yeah. <laughs> her strip poses, I don't know if these were like a work in progress, but compared to the, the, the detail in her outfit, they seem very basic. I know, they're hard to make, but they're, they're probably, probably some of the most important poses you can make overall, just having that clothing halfway off. She, she hmm. uh... 
I liked the, I mean, the personality shift was funny. She did it a lot like Amy, where she's just like, yeah, fuck this. I'm just going to drop this. I hate all of you. <laughs> but I don't know. Just like with Amy, I feel like I never really bought it in the first place. She keeps talking like, ah, you all, you fuckers, you all fell for it. You, I'm not really a sweet, innocent girl. It's like, I didn't really think you were. One thing is, uh, she comes off as like really chuny. Yeah, she's I can see yeah. that. She's constantly talking about like the powers of her alchemy and how she gave herself a new body and how she's like all powerful. She never really shows any of that. So it's it just comes off as like an eighth, an eighth grader. <laughs> it's such a pity she doesn't get to interact with Megumin. Because I know she's powerful. Yeah. I know she can like turn people into gold statues and shit of herself. But yeah, like the way she j- always just kind of rants about it and never does anything. And it's like, oh, so much better than all of you. She just, she just comes off as really chuny. And she's just like LARPing. So do you think she should like have a pose for that or something? Where she just like makes something out of midair? Just just to like show off? Or... It, it would help to, to show it off a little bit. Okay. You know, I, I generally like taking characters at face value, but it's, it's hard with a character like this. If she doesn't show it at all. Her proportions seem good. I still think she seems a little bit young. Mostly in like the face. I don't know. She's just got like this really round, puffy face with the with the big round cheeks. I don't know. She 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 looks like she could be my little niece or something. Just like, eh, you know, hey, what's up, sport? Have a have a tic tac. Complete sideline, but I like that she mentions her own niece in the game, and she's like, that my niece is like a total fuck up, and I hate her <laughs> so much. Sorry, what? That she just. Yeah, she just has like a few lines where she's like, I have this niece and I hate her. She's such a fuck up or something along those lines. And it's just comes out of nowhere, but it's so funny. Oh my God. I love, I love Cagliostro even more. I love, that's amazing. She's like, you just failed so hard that you remind me of my fuck up of a niece. I hate her. I think that's excellent. I'm very happy about that. These are all just nitpicks though. Like on the whole, very well done. Um, in also, terms like, of, it's very hard to tell if there are polka dots on her underwear. I thought it was just one solid piece. And apparently, make, am I like colorblind, or is the contrast there just like not quite as good as it could underwear? be? Underwear? Yeah, she has polka dots on her, on her underwear. It's like pink and like a very dark pink. I can't oh, really yeah. see that unless I zoom in. Yeah. I, I don't know if that's deliberate, but like that drove me insane. I'm like, why does this look weird? And it's like, oh, it's because it's. They're, they're supposed to subliminal polka dots. Dang, I yeah. got that wrong. <laughs> yeah, what the fuck, alias? I thought I was like tripping balls this whole time. Anyway, yeah, nice detailing on her hair. Uh, does she still do this? Like her, her hair like went behind the chair. Yeah, when she was masturbating. Let's see. Well, where, did she, did they fix that? No, I think I got the niece thing wrong. Where's it supposed to go? Be- behind her back, not behind the chair. I mean, it's hanging over the back of the chair. It makes sense. I don't know. It looks weird. First of all, now you're resting your your whole body on like the 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 cold chair, and now it's like it, it the way it overlaps with like her head and like the the head of the chair. It just I don't know. It looks I, like her head. I just dis- I just disagree with like, that. I think I think her head's just. Thing. It looks like her head's just no, kind of rolling like on knees. top of the on top of the chair. Damn, just kind of of, looks like I it's really perched there. I really wish that she just called her niece a complete fuck up in the middle of this like strip poker game. Yeah, I don't like, know. I think is, I've read into it too much. It'd be nice she if she just, did. She can just call the player a complete fuck up. That would be good. I like yeah. that. <laughs> well, we know you like the uh, tearing into the player. We're gonna get to that later. In a sexual way. I don't want. I don't want her to tear into the player, but I love like the snide remarks that like, yeah, my niece is just such a little fuck up. It's just like, what? I don't... What? She can't get mm-hmm. over it. I, I find that to—I don't know why—I find that to be so fucking funny. I think I might have read into that. I don't think that she actually does uh, does that or says that. I think I might have just read into it too many lines. You know, but it's, it'd be a good interaction if it did exist. I'm reading through her dialogue now. Well, I can continue to—I can continue to nitpick her art, but uh, it's not like it doesn't match the uh, source material. So I guess I'm just pissing into the wind here. I'm sorry, Alias. Work on those strip poses. 
The very basic right now. And, and make her show off her power some more. Any other thoughts? Gaglios for good. Keep writing her. Don't, don't move yeah, on keep to this character her. immediately. Keep doing. Do more of the thing. And uh, I don't know. This, this, out of all his characters, really seems to be like his, his ultra waifu. Dude, she's great. I love Gaglios. Bro. Super good character. All right. So moving on from uh, one medieval warrior to another. She, she, uh, this one takes a little bit more of a hands-on approach. We have Urza. Er, God damn it, gets me every time. Urza Scarlet. That's her name, right? From Fairy Tale, one of the most requested characters. I always mentally confuse her with like that other girl, Rhea's Gremory. From like, what, high school what DXT. That, what that high school of the dead or something. No, high school yeah. of the like, there are a lot of girls with like that red hair color, like Amy Doki Doki, for instance. All right. Uh, yeah. She's definitely a long requested character. Oh, yeah. She, definitely. She's yeah. Written and drawn by Niels. Dorian, what do you think? Yeah. Um, I like her hair and her face. I think that those are really great. They look pretty uh, source accurate. Uh, I like her, her armor, I think, looks pretty good. Um, yeah. I like her uh, requip sequences. Uh, they're, they're flashy and I, I think that they're cool. I think that they, uh, you know, spice up her, her stripping a little bit. I don't, I don't know if they would count too much as gimmicks. I don't know if I would have done both of them if I made her, but I don't know. They look, they look pretty cool. Um, I'm not, uh, I'm not taken with her, uh, with her dialogue. Um, I think that her dialogue has a lot of very uh, cliche lines to it. Uh, I, I think that she also just needs like a spell check, grammar check, you know, that that sort of thing. Um, you know, there's there's also stuff like her dialogue is organized so that every for most uh, of her things, every stage has its own selection of like just a few lines and like that only kind of works if you're willing to write like a lot of lines for each stage but as it stands if she gets like stuck on a stage for like you know a couple rounds she's going to be repeating the same exact dialogue over and over and over again and that's what happened to me on like two three different times so you know i would just recommend clumping her dialogue together into you know two to four stage clumps in order to just work around that. Um, I'm not exactly thrilled with her uh, proportions either. I feel once she takes off the armor, she's got a really long torso and really big like head and chest and her legs look kind of kind of stubby in comparison. You know, you mean, you mean Kisuke? Yeah, I mean, I mean, Kizuke. I mean, I think that she could use a proportion adjustment in order to to look a bit better, to look a little taller and slimmer and and all that. Um, her poses could also use another pass. I feel like uh, a lot of them feel kind of stiff, especially in the uh, above, like the earlier stages, um, you know, just just a little bit samey here and there as well so i i just kind of feel like uh she needs she's just going to need a lot of work to just kind of combat all of these uh smaller um well smaller uh you know errors and and such you know just just to make her better yeah so how about how about you namasp what, what did you think i i think you basically got all my all the feedback that um, I wanted to give kind of on, on the nose there. I think, I think the model could use some proportion adjustments. I think, I think the facial expressions are actually quite good. I think the head is really well done. I think the model when she's dressed looks really cool, but I do think that it's like, I, I can't really comment too much on like if the dialogues and character, I'm not very familiar with fairy tale, but I do think that like, it's, it's okay. It's just not like, it could use a proofreading pass, and I think the model could use some adjustments. Other than that, um, I think uh, the one thing that I will say about 
Urza is that I do think she has like a personality to her, which is cool. I just wish she was a little <laughs> more maybe combative, I guess, because she's like very confident, which is nice. And she just kind of sticks with that. And I think that's I think that's a nice change of pace. And she could just definitely keep pushing with it, which is cool. That's that's really all I got. You know, not too many deep thoughts that you know Dorian, you did you kind of took all my talking points. So there we go. Sorry. I've no I've interacted with, with Urza a bit, but I haven't had much chance to play with her. Um but yeah, kind of what you said, Dorian, and like I think that's more emblematic of like I understand like not everyone has the time or the inclination to work on this game constantly and, and to and to push their work to the next level. But I, I feel like uh, Niels as a creator has just kind of always hung around this particular style of creation. You know, like a lot of his models kind of look like this. They've got like a lot of the keys to K defaults, and there's definitely. I think she has lines at the at the beginning where she's like, "Oh, this is strip poker. Oh, okay, whatever. You know, that's kind of a thing he likes." And uh, even like the requip stuff, the sort of the, the stripping gimmick that was big in 2018 when he was more active. So he's just kind of mm-hmm. continued to do that. This character feels very much a blast from the past. I think the animations, oh, a little bit, yeah. I do think the animations are pretty cool. Yeah, which. Uh, I mean, I'm, it's not like she's a, a total wash, right? Like, any character that's this popular, if you if you make them at all, there's going to be people that appreciate that. Yeah, agreed. Uh, so if, if you're more concerned with that than, like, the, the, ad, the admiration and, uh, of, your, of your fellow devs of, like, oh, my God, you really took this to the next level, then, you know, it's... it's it's not like a huge sin to just stay where you are and do what you're comfortable with. You know, it's, it's not like she does anything offensive, so it's definitely, you know, it's better to have her at all than not at all. But, yeah, I'm just... I'm not seeing anything super interesting or new going on here. This, this feels very familiar. Mm-hmm. When there's been so many characters that have done so much more. So it's hard for her to stand out. So, Dark Magician Girl made her her uh, return to testing and eventually to main roster after an extended absence. But even if you left and returned more recently, there's room for you. We have here Adora. The uh, the base form before she goes Super Saiyan as as Shira from Shira and the Princesses of Power. That's the name, right? Yeah. yeah. Who I don't believe is currently on testing right now. She was removed again. Oh bummer. Mm-hmm. But pending yeah. another uh, rework, which is currently going on. So the the dev is still hard at work with her. So we can uh, briefly give our thoughts. What did you think, Dorian? I don't know if you got a, a chance to test her again when she was on. Uh, no, I, I tested her anyway. Um, I've also actually uh, seen the show, like all five seasons. So, I don't know. I, I think I have a pretty good basis of what she's like. Uh, I, I do want to preface this by saying that um, I haven't really been following how she's been updated and what exact path uh, her creator has taken so far. Uh, that being said, I have seen what the new model is shaping up to be, and I'm really excited for it. Uh, I think it looks a lot more source accurate, and I think it all, but it still looks, uh, very good. And I think it's going to fit in, uh, to this, to the game quite well. So I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to that art upgrade. Um, that being said, uh, yeah, I think that there's, there's some definite stuff that can be, uh, improved with with her um i think that uh she could like i think some of her poses need work uh some of them just kind of feel a bit sporadic in terms of what each limb is doing versus the face uh some of them seem a bit too expressive uh for their own good like i know she's doing the um i just had cake and i saw what a pony looks like face and I don't know how much that one should actually be included in the game or not. It's a very specific, specialized pose. 
you know? So, um, I feel like in her dialogue, she name drops a bit too much. Uh, I know that her friends are very, uh, no, oh, she's adorable. Uh, I know her friends are very important to her and that there's a lot of them and a lot of different unique personalities with them. But I feel like you definitely uh, shouldn't mention them, at least in stage zero, because, you know, I, b I barely know this character and you're expecting me to learn other ones. Um, I also think that she could probably bring them up in a more natural, natural sort of way. A lot of them just feel like... Like, like I said, name drops. Um, I feel like uh, her uh, anxieties aren't really played with. Uh, one of She-Ra the series' best attributes is kind of going into Katra and Adora's sort of like development and, and sort of showing how Adora is nervous uh, a lot of the time and doesn't know exactly what she's doing but is kind of thrust into being uh this hero role and she's not exactly sure what to do and so i think sort of having her approaching this game i don't want to say exactly the way she approached princess prom because you know like i don't want her to have lines like i studied so hard for this but i do think that having her like saying like right um uh, small talk uh good weather right you know that kind of thing where she is using that sort of uh preparativeness that she's known for rather than talking about that level of preparativeness would be good uh for her to to sort of show off those uh elements of her i also think playing into those anxieties on uh i know she's supposed to be based around like season three adora so i think that like she's still in that phase where she believes she-ra is mostly what she's good for so i think playing into that a little bit on why she transforms and then detransforms uh could be good to sort of um you know give give her some more characterization in that i also think she's a bit too upfront with a lot of her emotions especially in terms of uh her feelings towards other women a lot of them seem very upfront when they uh probably shouldn't be so so obvious in their statements uh, a bit more blushing sort of stumbly over words than directly like you know the the line like girls wow you know that kind of thing uh i know that that was a bit rambly oh, wow my dear wow my dear um, but um yeah uh deep cut. do you have anything yeah. worth saying uh, I'm also, you know, I, that was I a mean way to say that. What a, what a loaded question. Do you have anything worth saying? <laughs> Do you have anything? Jeez, the assholes that, have started that, to wear off on me. Does anyone think I have anything worth saying? No, um, probably not. But I, 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 man, where to go? Where to go with this? I really liked Shira and the Princesses of Power. It was probably my favorite show of like 2020. I'd go so far as to say, like, or even 2021. Mm -hmm. Like what it was it's just such a good show. Like I also wish that Yeah, I know. I, I wish uh I wish Raptor would finish in Trapta and also that like I I like Catra. Catra's like probably one of my favorite characters of all time. I just like I get it. Oh yeah. Good job. She's like, like the reason to watch. Yeah. Yeah, Cat Catra's the best. But Catra's actually the worst. Don't you know, Catra's the worst. Don't ignore me. Um <laughs> Does she yeah. make out with any of these girls? Yes. She does, in fact, make out with several of them. Nice. But spoilers. Not, not really. Um, kind of. Not several. But anyway. All right. Anyway, this is all to say that I think Adora is a very interesting character choice for Spinati. And like I target, like I talked about last time, I think the name dropping definitely does not do her service in the game i think the fact that it's just like a lot of like oh well let me talk about this or let me talk about this other character it's like well your goal with writing spinati things and this is just like generally true it's like your job is not to tell me about what your character source is like your job is to convince me to go watch it like and to that end like if you tell me about all these things like i have no reason to do that you know versus like if you show me why this character is fun and interesting so this is all to say, I 
I think like the angle they go with like the she stuff is fine. I also, again, I'll repeat for like the nth time. I think like having a character that doesn't necessarily have a canon sexuality and just like locking them behind one door is probably not the right call. Cause like, you know, I think there would be people very upset if all the male characters were straight. I think there would be people very upset if, you know, all the female characters were straight and vice versa. You know, given the topic matter in, uh, you know, in Shira, I, I think Adora is probably the exception to this compared to Rita and like Eris. But eh, I think I think that if she's undergoing a rework, there's not much content I can speak to that's going to be like immediately actionable to make her better. But I do think the biggest thing is like just like what Dorian said: talk about Princess Prom, talk about like how you know dora is this like killing machine for the horde and then she kind of like pivots to become something else like i think that's great that's all span on we're we're reviewing adora but really the reason or one of the big reasons her her writer removed her briefly was because he wasn't sure really what to do with shira she does transform into Shira, but he, he seemed unsure of like how to incorporate that or what exactly the, what exactly the justification should be. I think keeping Shira in here is fine. yeah. I think it's perfectly fair to to bring that up in a in a game all about your insecurities and yeah. and you know kind of state of mind and especially body image. It's like oh you like me like this. <laughs> I don't know what, uh, how Adora would really approach that, but I'm sure there, like, there's, you know, there's fans of buff girls, and there's plenty you could do there. I agree. So, with I, that. honestly, I think it's, I think it's hard. It's, it's easier to, to get it right than it is to miss. I'd probably agree with that. Let's see. I also wrote that she brought up her friends a lot, so we're unanimous on that one. Some of those references were more detailed than others. A lot of them were kind of unclear what she was talking about, especially to someone who doesn't know the show. Uh, if, she, if she makes out with them, she should talk about how she made out with them. I'd like to hear about that. Uh, let's see. She had like some fish out of water lines, which I, I noted were like the really good ones. Uh, I, think, I think it was mostly to do with like she didn't know how to play cards. And, or like she, she didn't quite understand the purpose of the inventory and like the bar and why everyone was getting together, just in a general sense, like why people would hang out. So there's some interesting stuff there. You said her poses were a little too expressive. I wrote that she was kind of stiff. Or yeah, some know. poses that are very expressive and other poses that aren't. Mo- mostly, it's the. Um... Uh, the the one what I forget which one it's called. I don't know. Like like her aroused pose. I I do not like that mouth that she uses. Yeah, yeah. that's that's not good. Please, that's please the girl. Wow. That. And also her um sparkle pose. Uh, that is a reference to a very specific um moment. Uh, which I don't I don't know how much it um carries over to her normal uh line to line kind of stuff. Let's see. One thing I noticed in, in reference art, which I don't have the reference, but I'm sure Solitaire could find it in the in the Kisuke channels. Apparently she's got a big ass. Where was that? She that uh, she Has she I don't know the, um, the let's let's just say the caboose isn't the smallest car on the train. The caboose is loose. <laughs> and I want to know where is the butt pose? Throwing in for Shira as well. I don't give a fuck. Now let me let me talk about a couple other things. Speaking of Sparkle, there there's there's a you know I was going to bring this up right the forfeit. Uh, we need to talk about this first of all. The Hitachi wand vibrators, no bad, stupid. I know she uses a sword. At least she didn't literally use the sword, but he is. Please, you, you do not need I, an implement. To masturbate, please just use your fingers. Also, this when she's a, kneeling, this is a banana on opinion. I think Adora is like, I ironically one of the few characters that can get away with this. Like, I'm not saying I'm a huge fan of it, but I don't. I I definitely don't think it in context. It's the cardinal sin that it usually is. 
Look at her. Look at her. Uh, look at her. Look at her vagina. Look at her. Her pubis. Her pubic mound. She's bone dry in this kneeling pose, and I think all of the kneeling poses. At least afford me that. At least, at least get some lubrication. I think that. Oh, I, I think that's. I mean, I think I. I think you're right on that. But mm. Kneeling in general is just bad. But you can't see anything, and that's what she does. Not only does she use the Hitachi wand, but she's kneeling the whole time, and it's like, come on, look at look at it. She doesn't even have to do anything. She just holds it there. There's nothing interesting. If you took that away, she wouldn't even be masturbating. Like, come on. I'm not into it. At the very least, like, like one of the pro- again, the problem with the Hitachi, uh, Hitachi one is that it's not that interesting to look at in terms of like how they move their body, and you can't see anything, especially when she's kneeling. So this is like a, this is a double whammy. Like, at least have her sit down, and maybe I could see her butthole. Like, come on. Give me something. <laughs> Give me something for the pain. So that's my main recommendation, is that uh, I want to see her butt. You know what they say, man, ass, yeah. titties, and in fact, titties, and in fact, ass. Show us her butt, spread her butt. Um, maybe we should move on. Yeah. I okay. think it's a good time to move on. Yeah. On the mask, you made one Resident Evil character. Did you think we would so quickly get another? I, I did not expect that. No, no, I did not. As someone who has had two characters added in and then immediately had a franchise mate added within three weeks, I feel it. Now, what? Jill Valentine is like the actual main character of Resident Evil, right? Is there one? Uh, and Chris, not, maybe? Chris, Red, Chris Redfield is arguably the main character. We have, we have Jill Valentine. Uh, no relation to Faye Valentine, other than the same person made her model. But it is a new writer. Well, collabing with an old writer. But Jill Valentine from Resident Evil. So, mostly a new effort. The posing, I think, is uh, done by the newbie in the writing. So, Dorian, give us your thoughts on Jill. Um, I think that uh, Jill is, is... I think she's going to need uh, some work uh, going forward. Um... Uh, just starting off with, yeah, I mean, all characters need work, but uh, just starting out with the art, it's a, it's a metal Litar model, so I think it looks pretty good uh, for the most part, especially the hair, you know, he's got those proportions, you know, they work out really well. Um, I feel like the, the coat around her waist could be a little better, and also the fact that her bra just kind of looks like a smaller version of her tube top. Um, I feel like that could be something different, something else, you know, um, look, look a little, uh, better. Uh, I think with her posing, she, she, she has like the one foot turned out one foot, uh, up front for like eight out of 10 of her poses. And I think that you could use some variety, at, at least swap which foot is, is out, you know, um, I think that her eyebrows, consistently are just in the same position in quite a few of them. She also only has 10 poses, so I two of which are um just like second versions of a pose. So, you know, you have calm, calm two, and I think it's disappointed, disappointed two. Uh just just having more will allow for a lot more uh express expressive uh lines, you know, just by having the tools by which to write them. Uh, I feel for her dialogue, um, I feel like she fe- she's a bit generic at the moment. Um, very matter-of-fact in how she talks about things. Um, well, wh- one thing is just she needs more generics just in general. Like, for her first round of generics, which cover, I think, like, three... Like, like I'm talking like her first like must strip females for stages zero through three. So that's four stages. She only has two lines for that entire thing. So those are just going to repeat a lot. So she definitely just needs more generics in general. Um, 
I feel like she mentions a bunch of stuff that if, you know, people weren't really familiar with Resident Evil would make not a lot of sense. Uh, Barry stars. She mentions Chris earlier. She has a thing where she explains who Chris is, but I feel like that could be worded a bit better. Um, Keeps mentioning typewriters. What's up with that? I mean, the typewriters is like, that's how you save in these games, but that's that's like a mechanic thing, and I don't I don't like those types of lines, you know, just in general. Um, feel like she's got a bit of an obsession with line with item weights, like uh, talking about little items. It's too early to be taking that stuff off. It's too late. Um, that that kind of thing. A bit game obsessed in that way. What what I'd really just like most out of her would be just to have her just nail down some personality traits to to really like I want I, for this I watched some a bit of the you know how on YouTube they have like the Resident Evil three movie and it's just like all the cutscenes so I watched some of that and she seems like you know a uh, action hero type like she doesn't take a lot of shit she's got some sass to her and I feel like I didn't really get any of those things in. Uh, the game so I'd really like it if like they could narrow down and just pinpoint some personality traits to really like make her feel more expressive and more individualistic than uh, what she is right now so yeah uh, Namasp Uh, yeah I think I think the biggest things with Jill are you know exactly I think the way that I wrote Leon is it's kind of like an action hero thing I think Jill has a lot of really good, like, I think the, like, intent behind the lines is actually quite good. Like, like one of her very early on, early on lines is like, yeah, it's a good thing I'm not a cop anymore. I have to arrest you all for indecent exposure. Like, that kind of stuff is good. Like, that's great. And she needs more of that. I think, basically, watching some, like, old, like, 80s action movies or, like, 90s action movies and leaning hard into those is a great idea to get a good grasp on, you know, just generally, um the tone of lines and things like that. I think the advice I gave to her writer when, you know, I was talking to them was something along the lines of like, why play, you know, what are the things that would make you want to play with Jill more than another character that's like Jill? So I think like the fact that she's like a cop or like this or, you know, that or something like that are all like perfectly valid ways to approach her. And I just think more of that is going to be good. Agree with you on the expressions. I think like the poses are pretty limited right now, but I do think that like she's also only like six hundred lines. Like there's plenty of room here for improvement and to kind of like yeah talk about yeah, who she true. is yeah and things like that. So I think there's like a lot of room to like I think this is definitely like a fine first effort because I think the things that are improvable are like qu- quite accessible to be honest. So I'm looking forward to seeing her when she's got some more, you know. Thought, you know, n- not thought put into her, but more just like time and energy to establish who this character is supposed to be, what about them is unique that makes them fun to play with and interesting for someone who doesn't like no Resident Evil. It's like the fact that she's a cop, that's great. The fact that, you know, she, I, I don't know, like things like that are really good and talking about those facets of her, in addition to some tweaks to. You know, for instance, how, uh, you know, not how she looks per se, but more like how, um, just like the poses, I think are going to go a long way. The, um, the dialogue and proofreading, definitely that'll help, but I think it's like, there are some really good ideas in play here, and I think we just need to lean into more of them to be like, you know, I'm a cop and I'm just going to mess with you the whole game. Those lines where she mentions she's a cop or plays that up, those are the only ones I really took note of, and they weren't bad. They were good. That's definitely, I, I mean, if you got to go in a direction, that's not a bad one to take. Agreed. And I, I think, like, by the same token, like, that can't be the entirety of the character, but I do think that there's yeah. plenty of room to, like, go in on that and come out the other side looking pretty good. It could, it could be a little, it could be a little tough to navigate in our, in our, current discourse but you know there there's definitely a market for the the cop check that'll put the cuffs on you yeah 
she's a retired cop at this point in her story. Like well, she isn't got she like a special forces now. She's just you know pot shotting zombies. I don't I don't know too much, but I, I think she's not like a regular beat cop anymore. Hey, whatever it takes, man. Give her something. Yeah. Oh, she's got a beret on in some in some models. Is she a green beret? Like a local like she's like SWAT essentially. Local Spinati player gets swatted. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> sends your IP address to SWAT. All right, so she, yeah, she made a lot of strange references like the typewriter thing. I didn't really get that. She had a lot of simple dialogue. Only the cop stuff was really that interesting. Um, the rest is mostly art related. Now, this was a model donation. Metal Guitar just kind of pawned this off to a uh, Neo Ghost and Bullet Shock. Bullet Shock's to newbie. Uh, I don't think he really intends to to work on the model anymore so i don't know if i should really criticize or get into the criticism there she does definitely fall into his his typical style which while not a bad style um you know she she's got the thickness down with the thickness she's got the wide eyes she's got sort of a wider face so yeah you can you, he's definitely left his mark and besides that like and her, her, her clothes are kind of weirdly simple. I mean, her clothes aren't that complex in the source material, but just like compared to her hair, especially her hair's got a lot of detailing on it, but her body and, and uh, clothes are pretty simple. Uh, this almost seems like a model he made kind of a while back. Uh, but that's the thing. Like as, as source filmmaker and blender have, have taught us, right? You can, get like a, you can get a model made by a veteran, a professional. But that doesn't mean they're going to be posed and, and animated like a professional once, it, once it's out there to the masses. And there's, this is definitely a case there where it's almost uncanny how like the, the, the model quality versus like the posing quality. <laughs> um, and, you know, this is just amateur stuff. This is stuff that every new creator does. But you got like, she's always staring ahead. Her eyes very rarely change. Even when she's like talking about herself, she's always like staring ahead. Her eyes don't really change shape. Her irises don't really change shape. She doesn't really look around very much. Uh, she doesn't open her mouth very much when she's talking. Let's see. There's, of, there's often times where like her face doesn't like match her lines. She talks about like, well, like, well, I'm fucked. She says with a smile <laughs> towards the end of the game. <laughs> Uh, even like her masturbation poses, like her legs are always so symmetrical. I'll have a, I'll have a pose here, for instance. She's pretty much always like her legs are almost always doing the same thing. It's not a terrible pose, but mm -hmm. you could do a lot better. Also, she just says Chris. She just yells out Chris at the very end. I'm sorry, but uh, he cannot continue the bloodline. You're going to have to splice your eggs together with Claire. Bloodline has been ended by Hu Tao. What'd you say? I said the bloodline has been ended by Hu Tao. <laughs> <laughs> and canonically. Um, you know Leon can, can come inside more than one girl. But no, he's not that sorry. kind of guy. He's not that kind of no way no way man, as as that one reaction image says. Oh. Also, as long as we're criticizing the model, uh, her nipples look kind of cross eyed. They could, yeah, a little especially, bit. especially with how big her breasts are, like they should be a little further out to the sides. They're I think it's also just the shading, like it comes up to that curve and like her nipples should be at like closer out to where the apex of that curve is, but, yeah. they, but they're not. So I think it kind of shows up in, in that way a bit better. Yeah, just doesn't match. So... We we just covered a cop who's been who's been prowling the inventory for for rule breakers and ne'er do wells, and uh, she might have to escort this young boy out out of the inventory now for for uh, being underage. It's the return of the flower boy, the flower child himself. It's Basil from Omori, the the one who did not die at the very beginning, apparently. Mari, the other one, she died right away. 
I don't know. I, I haven't played o- Omori. I don't know. I'm sure it's a good game. Just go yeah. play Earthbound. I have also not played Earthbound. I don't play a lot of games. Play Earthbound, it's good. I'll add it to the imaginary list that I definitely have off to the side right here. Dorian, uh, what do you think of Basil? What do you think of, ba- of, of Basil 2.0? Oh, Basil. Basil Harder. To Basil, to Omori. Um, yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, I'm, I'm not one to, you know, proportions aren't really my area of expertise, so I'm going to leave that to uh, other people. I don't, I don't think. Are you sure? Because I'm looks. currently into Turan Dots. Thank you. Uh, but no, those, those were helped. Um, yeah. Uh, so that's that's not my field, but um, I'm liking his personality so far. Um, I he he has some very uh, nice lines. I like that he manages to be kind of poetic uh, at times. I, I like that he has you know that shaky confidence. Uh, I didn't know this until I believe today, but it used to be that he just took pictures, but now he like asks people constantly like, "Hey, can I take your picture?" And I think that's nice. I think that adds a lot of characterization to him and I, I think it makes it more natural and a little less, you know, porn parody-esque. Um, well, well, that's better than unsolicited pictures, but he's still, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Now it's just like he holds up the camera and never takes any pictures. <laughs> I don't know. I think it's more of a prop, you know, like some characters have swords, but they never cleave someone in two, you know. Um, I I didn't find much uh, problem with it. Uh, I think he might have a few too many lines based around flowers and sunflowers, but that's that's like a nitpick. Um, So I, I, I don't know if this has been changed. I know he's started like a generics rework in the past couple days, but um, he does this thing where every single strip stage he mentions a either a friend or someone who he's very close to, and uh, he does all that, and I feel like it needs to build to something. I feel like there's no sense of catharsis at the end of, like, each of my friends individually are like this, but me in relation to all of my friends are like this, you know, like it feels like there needs to be something at the end on like what his relationship to all of his friends are. I think that there's a similar case to be made for his um, depression versus, you know, uh, I I forget exactly what the phrase is that he just keeps uh, repeating. Um, is, you know, in order to to say, like, you know, just be happy. I I totally forget off the top of my head, and I'm sorry about that. But, um, you know, I feel like that kind of keeps going and getting a little bit worse for him until, like, you know, at the end, in, like, his naked stages, there was, like, you know, the drop shadow on his face, and his eyes are green, and, like, you know, he's, like, extremely nervous. And then it just kind of goes away for the masturbation stages, and then it doesn't get addressed or i didn't see it get addressed afterwards and so i am not going to recommend that like you resolve those things while he's jerking off because that's uh, as a wise man once said hey namasp uh hey man we're trying to masturbate here but um at some point i feel like those two things sometimes that's all you need to work through your problems is you know just rub one out truly it is but um you know, maybe like afterwards or just beforehand, something along those lines, I think would be good to help him round out those character arcs. Namasp, uh, welcome back. I mean, you never left at all. Um, what do you think of Basil? Well, <clears throat> this is, you know, th- this, this might be a bit, you know, rich coming from the guy who continuously writes Natsuki who wrote Futaba and Say and 9S, but like, uh, Natsuki still, could beat the shit out of this kid. I mean, she could, but it's like, I Air still combo. Think, I, you know, I still think there's work to be done to make him look more, you know, adult. I'm not saying it like is, is it's like in a fail state right now, but I do think that it's like, it would, it could take a little bit more effort, to be honest. 
just to get him where he needs to be. But, you know, there there just, was an effort made here. Mm-hmm. It's better. It's better. But I don't know. I, I just... I, I guess, like, I... I don't know. I, I, I just think if not if like Basil were like a girl, I, I don't know if he would make testing in the first place, but I I don't know. Like I, I'm sorry. I don't really have a lot of positive feedback to give here. I just think that this character is very much not for me. And I think that there are people who really enjoy, you know, Basil and can go ahead and keep working on him and make him into something really wonderful for those people, but I'm not one of them, and I don't really have a lot of actionable feedback to give. It's just kind of like so far outside my wheelhouse. I don't, I don't really know what to say about it because it's like, it's not like, oh man, there's like some controversy here that I can dig into and make something. It's like, it's not even that. It's just kind of like, eh, you know, he's a, you know, he's a guy that likes to photography things. He can't photography things anymore because it's not, you know, quite as consensual as they want as it was wanted to be, and I don't really know where to go from here. So. I think there's some work to be done, but I don't think it's impossible to get him into a state where, you know, he could be uh, celebrated on his own merits. That's all. A scathing condena- uh, condemnation. But uh, I mean, as, as scathing as I really ever am. <laughs> there is no hope. Um, I do think he looks a little older. His legs were made longer. There were, okay, I probably knew at least one or two guys in high school that were about this size. Uh, so I'd say, before I thought he was just like slam dunk, this looks too young. Now I'd say he's kind of borderline. So at least there's a little room for argument. Um, better. Yeah, it's, it's definitely yeah. better. So he's still young. He kind of, he, okay, so for personality, I wrote in in all capital letters, and then circled it, FLOWERS. That seems to be his personality now, um, is flowers. I like flowers. It goes beyond his stripping. So stripping, I, even last time I criticized uh, his formulaic stripping lines. He would, he would talk about his friends and what he liked about them, and then he would compare them to a flower, and he never spoke about himself or, or, or his own body, which... I mean, I didn't really want to hear about that because I had a little uh, some age concerns. But that is what you should be talking about is yourself and your body. Yeah. Um, so, and even when it got to like a nudity reveals, you would always compare everyone else's yeah. body to like a flower. Or, or yeah, I, d- I didn't plant. like that either. It feels a little like... It's like, do you have a sexuality? Is really sexual? To to do that, like if you were more if you were more sexual, I I think that would be a good thing. Like I, I get what you mean. I think that would be a good add is to have him be more you know at least a little bit more interested in the sex side of things. Otherwise, it's like why are you here, bro? It's 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 a newbie writer thing. It's it's they take the one aspect of the personality. It's just like blah. it's just like it it just everything everything is a gardening metaphor. It's like you're watching people ma- masturbate. He's like, this reminds me of pollination. It's like, really? This reminds you of like a, a bee crawling around on a flower? I think Beta had a good point where it's just like, you know, at first I was worried about people shaming me for being horny, but then I realized like you're the perverts for playing this game. So, you know, don't, don't worry so much about it. Just you know. There's even like a weird, like, I don't want to call it predatory aspect, but he, he oscillates between like nervous and then sometimes it seems like he was almost kind of pushy. Like, patience, patience. <laughs> like, for, for stripping stuff, it's like, mm, what's with this kid? I don't know. He also had, like, he had like a fantasy forfeit. He fantasized about his friends. I don't know, that's, that seems to be more like your fanfic. Whereas, this is supposed to be like a crossover game. You're supposed to interact with the other characters. So, can you kind of have that inform his sexuality a little bit? You know, like, first of all, you know, they can't read minds. There's nothing for them to engage with. And you know, it's not particularly lewd. He was just kind of, he, he just said, like, Daphne. It's like, okay, who's that? <laughs> Why is he thinking about Daphne? Mm-hmm. I guess he wants to fuck her. Does he, does he want to bend, bend her over his, his shelf full of, uh, does, like, he, does he want to press her up against his greenhouse glass? Like, what's going on here? Give me something to work with. Does he want to get pressed up against the greenhouse glass? That seems more appropriate. 
I don't know. This, this is a thing that happens with, with new writers, but come on. Uh, let's, let's expand his horizons beyond uh, flowers. That's, that's supposed to be the flavor to his personality, not the personality in and of itself. Basil is in touch with the natural world. I don't know if, uh, if either of you have anything else to add. No, I, I think I got everything across that I wanted to. Basil is in touch with the natural world. And what's more natural than uh, wild horses? Here we have yet another return to testing with, uh, with significantly revamped art. We have Rarity from, uh, uh, but not from My Little Pony, but from Rarity from uh, Equestria Girls, where, are, where they are all humans. And this is Horse Cat's continuing effort to make them all extremely source accurate and give them big cartoony eyes, as you can see there. You thought anime eyes were intense? Look at these things. They're like view screens. So she still, she still does like the various outfits. But she's got like the, the cartoony, like the shaded hair. It's all like you know, these big looping locks. It's all nice and styled. She's got custom animations and stuff. Dorian, what do you think of Rarity's Return? What do I think of Rarity's Return? Well, I like it a lot. I, I think uh, I like her new style. I think it looks really good. I was never like, uh, I, I didn't play with like the old ponies a lot. So this isn't like a big, you know, shock to me for her to look like that. I think she still looks fine. I think, she, you know, it, it doesn't like ruin it all for me. No, I think she looks really good. I, I love her hair. Uh, I love her new outfits. Um, uh, I, I love her new expressions. Uh, she's very much got like, you know, that hand drawn. That's Horse Cat's big thing is, you know, hand drawing uh, all of the many different parts of things, including a lot of her expressions, which I think add uh, a lot to her in, in making that expressiveness. Um, I liked her clothing tidbits. I feel like that they were sometimes a little nonspecific, but, you know, she was... I, I liked how charming she was and like she constantly complimented other people around her like she wasn't you know completely vain the whole time i think i think that that was that was nice um one thing i will say about the expressive posing is that sometimes the line doesn't go as hard as the art does like like in the art she's like fainting or grimacing or like doing these grand expressions but you know the line is like oh darn that that's hyperbole but same difference yeah. um There's not a lot of like formatting like italics and stuff yeah uh speaking of like i i do think italics would work i think more people should use italics just in general for like emphasis and for that kind of thing because i use it a lot but um punctuation was also a thing i feel like commas periods and semicolons just she needs like a pass uh for that one um uh also in terms of her expressions uh towards the end she we got like her panicky side a bit more which i think is really great and i really liked it and the expressions are fantastic but i feel like they would just happen during the stripping stages and she would get all flustery and panicky and uh, you know it's fine rarity it's fine you know and then just we would get back to like the hand lines and whatever, and she'd be fine. She'd be, you know, back to normal. I feel like there needs to be like a, a transitory line between them, just like at least one hand any line where she's like calming herself down, repeating like a mantra or something. You know, you could come up with something fun and silly for that kind of thing in order to get her calmed back down and like ease that transition uh, between them. Um, she does seem kind of weirdly embarrassed. Yeah, um, I th I think it's not entirely embarrassment, but just nerves, like just just panicking. Not really about her body. I don't know. Like it doesn't feel like she's like an ENF exactly, but more so just feeling a bit overwhelmed at the moment. Um, maybe she is intended to be an ENF and that was the diss, but, um, no, I, I don't really feel a lot of ENF vibes from her. In fact, I would like it if, like, her panicky self was, um, foreshadowed a little bit more in, like, one of the early stages. 
just just to like give it clear so when it happens later on you're like ah okay uh this is that thing that i saw earlier um plus also i just like those poses and i feel like you should use them more uh yeah, uh, the one other thing is that I think she was a little game terminology esque in how she like talked. Like, you know, th- this is kind of a thing that you can notice sometimes is using words like accessories or layers or describing an uh, item as minor. Like, that's not. I, I don't feel like a lot of people would actually in a real strip poker game describe an item as you know of clothing as being minor. Um, you know, and especially one thing for all writers to look out for whenever you're writing accessory and minor lines is think if this was a pair of shoes or socks, would this line make any sense? And if it doesn't retool the line because, you know, you know, that's just a general piece of advice. But I think that she was a bit just terminology-esque sometimes in in some of her lines in ways that like we realize as developers looking at a ce that i don't think characters would look at if this was a true situation for them so yeah um namasp uh what do you think about our newly revamped rarity you know it's actually a really interesting question because i don't remember a whole lot about like uh Rarity EG right after she released, but I do think that the outfits are really different this time, and I think that's kind of a loss to me. That being said, like I like that I like how she is now. If she came out like this today, I think she was great. Um, I, I can't tell what's really changed. If I'm being honest, besides like the fact that her art doesn't uh, persist, the art as usual with everything Horse Cat does is fucking beautiful. She got a new face. She got a facelift. Pretty much. Well, yeah, I mean, I know that. I know that, but, like, I'm talking more generally, like, what lines changed, etc. I don't think the writing changed much at all. Well, her outfit changed a lot, right? Because before she had, like, a couple of options, now it's just one of them or so. Yeah, her, her, her clothing changed. Yeah, I think, I think that's kind of a shame, but otherwise, you know, I like her. I think she's really cute. I think the changes are good. I think the expressions are awesome. I do wish that it would be like, I, I think I, I, I'm i a little bit always like, I don't think taking away something in service of making things a little easier on yourself is a good idea. But, you know, I do think that the new art is really strong. I would say, like, if it were me writing a sponsorship re- requirement, I'd say she has to have the old outfits back, too. But, you know, I, I don't think it added a whole lot to the character, and I think she's kind of good as she is, so... I don't know. Your, mile- your mileage may vary, but I think it's okay. This definitely feels like another disconnect between like art and dialogue. Her her dialogue seems yeah. a lot more kind of older and yeah. shadier than her art is. I don't mm-hmm. think it really received a revamp at all. Some lines are pretty good, like her fashion tips, even if they're kind of apropos of nothing. But I other she's, times, I think she's great. I think like yeah. the fashion tips and stuff like that are really strong. I just think it's a shame that like I really would like it if she got like a dialogue once over as well, because like it feels like this is a rework that didn't. Like I understand why horse. Horse Cat is doing the model redevelopment that he is. I I totally respect that. I also just think that it would be great if she were, uh, you know, given a dialogue. It's kind of a consequence of like setting a goal for yourself to like, I'm going to do this for all of the ponies. Yeah, but I mean, I think that's kind of like, I think it's fine. I think we're going to see some process improvement based on that. Yeah. The the new art is general. I mean, it's it's jarring at first, definitely, but you, you get used to it, and it's and I think it looks better. Do, like once you, once you get used to it, yeah, I definitely think it looks mm-hmm. better once you get used to it. It takes it takes a little bit because she looks very different compared to the others. I mean, unless you stick her with the other ponies, but it is it was worth it. I mean, she looks like the source material, and it definitely it definitely fits overall. And it, and it, all that all those custom assets then we let her have. Really, really interesting expressions. God, she's cute. Like, mm-hmm. I, I really, I really like Rarity as a character way more than I thought I did because she's like a fashion character that's like not obnoxious. I think when I do get back to writing Marinette, it's going to be like Rarity targeting Central. So I, I'm hoping she has like a really <laughs> active author by then. Does she anyway, have a butt pose in every stage? That's I awesome. Believe she yeah. does. Hell yeah. All right. 
Hold on, wait. I got I got to find it now. Is it every stage? I'm not sure it's every stage. I'm not seeing it. It used to be every stage because she used to have one with like a long, like backless dress. That was super hot. Oh, okay, maybe it's there. Uh, whatever. I'm not going to spend all my time looking for it. But she, she has like fully custom like eyes and mouths that you can see like, oh, I wish this shit was in Kisuke, an actual good fucking mouth. But yeah. just, yeah, mm-hmm. that, that, that disturbed like toothy grimace, like that's not in Kisuke, at least not a good one. So that's all custom. So she has appropriately cartoony expressions which match the art, which might otherwise have been an issue, but she makes it work because she, she goes all the way in that regard. Uh, I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it the way I always say it. Uh, her hair needs to flip with her head. I hate to I pile hair, even more I, on top I, of I actually think the hair is fine. Like, cause no. It's actually supposed to be it needs to flip. Volumetric. It needs to flip because no, that's what doesn't. her hair does. Look at that gif. It flips. This is not up for debate. Her hair isn't flipping in that gif. She's just oh. turning her head. It totally is. I've I've seen it. I've seen it in other gifs. It totally happens. I'll trust you for other gifs, but I don't think for that one. So and on now I gotta to, find this. On to our character of the hour with the uh, author on the call. So. Turin dot. I wasn't started... done, goddammit. Oh, no, please. I'm altering the deal. Pray that I do not alter it further. Um, yeah, so Turin dot. I, I wasn't think, done. Um... Listen. The other thing is, she, ha- she has like uh, custom legs in her forfeit, which I don't know if that's going to become a, a, a more common thing. You'd know, you know it would have to. <laughs> uh, it, it, it would certainly be nice, but it's not easy. Some of them, I think, work out better than others, though. Like, these, like, they're, like, the anatomy is right, but I'm not sure, I don't know, like, something about the foreshortening, or just, like, the, I don't know, it looks a little off. Like, it needs shading or something? Maybe. I don't know. But then there's one where, like, leaning back, it's always ridiculous, by the way. And, like, that, that perspective kind of works. So it really depends. Yeah, let's let's move into our final testing character. Now that, now that I've derailed and I'm re-railing this train. We have a character by our, our very own guest, Dorian. That's why we brought him on. It's it's Turandot from a you might think from the opera, but actually from a twenty nineteen interactive fiction, which I guess is the fancy way of saying a text adventure. Yeah. Which I briefly played. I didn't get to meet Tarandot. But like you didn't even meet her? <laughs> no. They they just they it, I I I got through the bar scene. It's like, all right, I get it. <laughs> Listen, I'm not into text games, okay? I always feel like I'm doing something wrong. You you literally cannot fail at what? this game. Really? <laughs> this one specifically, uh spoilers, I guess, for anyone who wants to try it. I don't think it's possible. Well, uh, don't spoil the ending. I, I, I will say, I, I searched it up. It's like, oh, okay, Tarandal, what's the deal with this? She, she's like a princess. Mm-hmm. Now, let me go ahead and explain what I found, which was, it was, it was like a, an early 20th century opera by this Italian uh-huh. guy called Puccini. Or yeah. Puccini? I think it's Puccini. The great Puccini, Mano okay. Pagliacchi. Now, <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to summarize this, this plot summary because I couldn't believe what I was reading. So the idea was mm-hmm. that you know, Tarandot, she's like this imperial oriental princess who's like super beautiful. Everyone falls in love with her. And she's mm-hmm. like, mm-hmm. Eh, answer, answer my riddles three if you wish to take my hand in marriage. So she has like a million suitors and they all try to do it and they all fail and get beheaded. So there's this, there's this like... There's this like displaced prince who's wandering around with like a slave girl and his father, <laughs> who just uh, stumble upon Turandot's domain and fucking come in here. And of course, the, this dude immediately thinks with his dick and falls in love with her and doesn't notice all the d- decapitated heads. It happens. <laughs> now you would think, you would think, right? Okay, the the plot of this 
opera is going to be is going to be the riddles. Act one, act two, act three. I don't know. He solves the riddles. Yeah. He solves the riddles in like act one. <laughs> <laughs> and and Tarantot has to like, uh, uh, well, um, I'm, st- I'm not going to do it. Fuck you. And he's like, uh, okay. For some reason, he still wants to marry this bitch who won't even agree to a, uh, a deal Correct. she made. And now, she's, and now he's like, oh, okay. Well, if you, you have to you get to kill me if you can find out my name by the end, <laughs> by the end of, the, of, the, of the night or something. And it's like, wh- what is happening? This plot is just like stalling for time. That's opera, baby. <laughs> it's like, this is random ass. And so she agrees to this. So her, so she's just like, oh, okay, I'll just send some villagers to fucking torture it out of him. And then the climax of the play is like the slave girl who's in love with the prince, by the way, fucking kills herself. <laughs> in like a show of love. And that like somehow convinces Tarandot, like, oh, okay, maybe this guy's legit. And then he like just plants one on her. And he's like, I believe that you love me so strongly that you won't kill me. And then he tells, and then he tells her his name. And then I guess they fall in love. <laughs> yeah. What kind this of is, fucking plot is this? That's this is fuck all to do with the uh, interactive fiction. Like, like he I immediately would because it's a terrible fucking plot. Yeah, he immediately shows up and he's like, "Oh, Kalaf," and he's like, "You know my name?" And it's like, "Yeah, keep up." Like, like it barely <laughs> has anything to do with the structure. The riddles are at the way end. All sorts of shit. No slave girl. I'm sorry, but. How do you write this plot? Obviously, he fucking. Obviously, he the died. riddles make the whole fucking story, and then at the end, he fails. But then she she like fell in love with him over the course of the story, and they get married ever anyway. Obviously, it could fucking write. I wrote that in five minutes. <laughs> what are you doing? Uh, Bikini? Uh, he died in the middle of writing it. What? It had to be finished by other people because he died in the middle of writing it. Well, maybe he would have finished it if he wasn't stalling for time with the stupid name shit in the middle. Probably. Anyway, Tarandot's really good. Dorian, what do you, yeah, what, uh, what do you want, where do you want to go with Tarandot and Spinetti? And what was your inspiration? Well, my inspiration was just the game. And I, th- I think just, honestly, Tarandot came after a long period of I wanted to start a new character, but I had, you had no find, idea. Like, the artisanal waifu. You had to like search the Himalayas yeah. for the weirdest shit you could possibly fucking find. You needed something be, appropriately like, highbrow and fucking ob- obscure. I had some shit that I was thinking about. Uh, one of which, here's a here's a treat into thinking how I think, um, was uh, Ninochka from the 1939 Ernst Lubitsch movie Ninochka, about a communist who discovers the wonders of capitalism. Uh, yeah, I was thinking of doing her. Why did you write this? <laughs> That's the best! <laughs> You know, you know, for the reward thing where I'm like, I'm thinking of some characters. One of them, one of them's a communist. That was her. God damn um, it! <laughs> yeah, no, but like, I felt awkward because she's like a live action character and all that kind of shit. <laughs> anyway, <Fair enough>. um, <laughs> but uh, so yeah, I was, you know, I, I had a bunch of other stuff that I was trying out, but eventually I did find her and I fell in love with her and I wanted to. To, to bring her in. So truly, she is just a smattering of all sorts of different elements and, you know, like pulling from like, she's a little bit Saturday morning cartoon villain. She's a little bit, you know, modern feminist. She's a little bit, you know, of just a, a, a bit of a goofball. You know, she she's just kind of pulling from all these different uh, uh, places, and I, I just kind of wanted to form her and share her. I just thought she was just such an interesting and complex character, and just really weird to write in a lot of ways. Because because essentially, I read this in a review, kind of that she is supposed to. Her entire game is about what it's like to 
introduce yourself to another person and to like have them get to know you and the fears and the walls that you try and put up and the violence to avoid trying to be vulnerable and all that and so you know that's that's essentially what she's like she's like always trying to think like two steps ahead and being like okay so you think that I'm like, oh, a lonely princess in the tower, but actually I'm not. I'm doing fine. Like, and you think, oh, I'm so angry because of shit that happened with my family. Like, yeah, I'm fucking pissed about that, but like, no, not really. You know, so trying to always think in terms of tropes was, I think, really interesting with her. Anyway, that's that's a little bit of development history. Uh, so how much did you, did you take from like the text game itself? Um, for all of my characters, uh, what I do is I find their source and then I just copy paste all of their dialogue into a Word doc. Um, it's, it's helpful because when you, you know, want to just look at their dialogue, but you don't want to play and pick up a video game, it's just all there. I didn't do it for Galatea because with her, I literally just played a game before I started writing her every day. Just just to get a taste of the dialogue. So there's like some stuff that is like ripped off lines in there. But, you know, most of it is, you know, personal taking care of, you know, you know trying to just emulate her style of, of writing of, you know, theatricality and practicality at the same time, which is very hard. Yeah, damn, dude. I wish I thought as hard about my characters as you do about yours, because I, I definitely do not. Um, no, this is no. just the part that I like. I'm just there's there's other parts that just I don't like as much, and so I think less there. Like you two are way better at targeted lines than I am. It's just not an area I'm great at. But I I really oh, enjoy, weather. yeah I really enjoy her like quite a bit. Like I think um, thank you. Yeah, it's hard to say, like, what is your best character? Because I think there's so many and so many different kind of avenues that it's hard to just say, like, oh, yeah, you know, it's not, it's not, it's not. Because, like, it just feels, like, disingenuous because, like, they're all good, right? To me. And I really like the Saturday morning cartoon villain angle of her. I know that's not quite, like, in the sense that, like, you didn't necessarily, like, articulate that openly, I think it's just something I really yeah. enjoy about her. Like, I think she's like a really interesting character. A lot of writing her was unwriting her in that there were a lot of times when I really wanted to put in like memes basic Saturday game. morning, like memes. And like she had a line that was like, it was an accessory line like, oh, this is so boring. Can't we put in some saw blades or something to spice things up? And it's like, that's very Saturday morning cartoon villain. And, you know, like, that one uh, Yu-Gi-Oh skit from Pro ZD, but it's like she would not say that she does not want to put people into direct harm. Get rid of that, and so it's yanking back and being your own leash and telling yourself no, you can't always do the funny meme or the no. She she's not like a Regina George type. Uh, that was like almost a thing for a while, but no, she's not. So so trying to unwrite those lines as well. That, that shows a lot of discipline in, in the creative process to say, no, she wouldn't say that. That's most of what I do. Yeah, just retooling lines that you think like kind of work and then just doing it. Also, like just one thing I recommend to people, is just reading lines aloud. I think it helps a lot with like pacing and, and such, you know, if you can. If, if your roommate's in your room, don't start saying like, uh, you right know, the pussy. Ooh, yeah, right, yeah, eat me out, you know, whatever. Oh boy, or maybe, maybe you're like that with your roommate. What I don't know, I'm not doing? here to judge. What are you doing, step bro? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah, is that is that a genre of gay porn? Is, is roommate porn probably? It's like they were mm. great friends. They shared a bed together for the last 23 years of their life. It's like, uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, on the mask, do you have any other thoughts on Tarandon? 
I think she's great. You know, Dorian, way to always kind of consistently knock it out of the park. I wish I had like more critical feedback for you other, but it's just like, I, I do think, you know, to, to your point, like more targeted lines, always a good thing. Yeah. She's very bare bones in that, that fact right now. You could also just like do more, um, like filtered lines instead. I think that would be perfectly fine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Otherwise, yeah. I don't want to hear no shit about how Vandred is this like super obscure source material that no one's ever seen. Fucking, you fucking Google Vandred comes up first result. <laughs> that shit doesn't happen with Turan dot, the interactive fiction. No, you it get doesn't. The opera. You got to type in Turan dot interactive fiction to e- make it even come up page one. Yes. So, I mean, that's how I found the opera in the first place. I was just going to okay. skim it, and then I kept reading, reading the plot. I was like, what the fuck? I'm going to have to rant about this on the podcast. So, thoughts on Tarandot herself. First thing I wrote was LOL. Hmm. This bitch is clever. I like her. <laughs> she, I mean, that's the, that was the number one takeaway, is that she was just funny. Now, you, you, like your characters have always been pretty clever. Like Galatea is clever in her own way, but it just mm-hmm. uh, Tarandot's got this this biting wit to her <laughs> stuff, and 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 it mixes well. Like there's jokes about her dungeon mm-hmm. of death, and then later on, uh, mm-hmm. there's there's jokes that take a more sexual angle. There's <laughs> where she she says the nickname for her throne is the suitor's face, <laughs> or yeah. uh, or um. There's a there's a period of time where you where you or uh, you learn if a man that you've met has a fetish. I like to call this period the first five minutes. Yeah, that's there's, there's this shit like that. She's always she's always rolling out the zingers, and I and mm-hmm. I like it. Let's see, and I think I think the other thing is you know she's got the whole dungeon of death princess thing. You can kind of see. All the, all the different directions you had in mind and all the different elements of her you wanted to throw in because she is very self-aware. Yeah. Even with how she goes into the big rant about how she will... She, she tests her suitors and no one will ever win her hand and then she's like, wait, do you people know me? Did I need to say yes. all that? Yeah, that's... <laughs> Yeah, that's that's part of it, because I, I did want her to, you know, do the big boastful kind of stuff and not just dive in. And also, like, it, it, it's nice because so far I haven't gotten too far into targeting and no one's done like the killing Sorry, people is wrong sort of approach yet, which is which is nice because, well, I guess it would be interesting because, like, you know, one thing about her is that her opinion of the Dungeon of Death kind of changes depending on like your criticism of it so like if you're like killing people is wrong she'll be like well i don't i don't kill people you know in the same way that like jigsaw doesn't kill people kind of no people Except, the dungeon does it for me you stupid yeah. idiot but i mean she at all times she tells them if you want to leave right now go out we will let you we'll even pay you we'll give you some therapy she, she literally says, you know, we'll, we'll give you some therapy if, you know, this guard you, you know, and just leave on your own. But nope, they're always high strung and they're like, nope, I want that royal puss too much. And then they fucking die on a set of spears. Oops. Can't we just like go on a date? No, you do. <laughs> uh, yeah, except like. That's like the second part of the dungeon is like you dangle from chains above a crocodile in a pool of water that's slowly filling. But actually, she's like, eh, let's be on a date and we'll play a fun party game where like I ask you dumb questions like, you know, what's what's your biggest dream? You know, what would you be doing if you didn't have your current job and all that? And so like that's that's one thing that I've been meaning to maybe put into her for like prompt markers i have a weird relationship with like prompts because i feel like they can be useful and good to extract detail and get conversations going but like it, it yeah, feels like hold into them after a certain point yeah like like i can't put them back into my normal targeted dialogue 
anymore. Like, like they feel like if they're only in the hand any case, then it's just going to be around and then wait, 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 around, wait, wait, wait. And it's like there, there's a disconnect there. And at one point, I just kind of stop replying to them. You know? Yeah, I, I just draw a hard line on those, but I think they're still valuable. They just can't go on forever. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty much it. But yeah, but it's just that, that realism, that, that layered personality, it's really built into everything, and you can see it. You know, she's got the, there's parts where she's bored, so she takes out a nail file. <laughs> she's, she's got a, like a really unique look to her face and her clothes, and uh, even like the shading and like, you know, kind of like grabbing her dress a little bit, and like it kind of shades around her fingers, and you can, you can see where she's grabbing. That's cool. She's, she's got, like, the, she's, she's bold, and she's got the strong opinions, but she's also very self-aware. She's, um, and, and it's like a very, it's like a well-explored premise. Like, it feels like she's been doing this for a while. Like, she just comes oh, yeah. up, mm-hmm. oh, you know, maybe I'll have the, the suitors fight to the death instead. <laughs> Give them some swords, make a day out of it. Just stuff like that, you know, like, uh, exactly. the Saturday morning cartoon villain. It's like, she's kind of thought about it for a while. Like, yeah, I think m- making your character self-aware is can be pretty helpful in like thinking about them like that was one thing that like with galatea i didn't really account for because like i submitted her to testing and i got those first couple of targeted lines and they were all ah a talking statue and i'm like you know what i did not think people were going to react like that i'm gonna be honest really? like i just i had spent so much time with her that the fact that she was a talking statue just kind of like and that's weird, just kind of left to me for a little bit. And so she did that. And then, like, I got those. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I forgot about that a bit. And then, minor so detail. I, minor detail. And so I added some lines to her being like, you know, if, if no one targets her, she's like, uh, thank no one, thank you all for not freaking out. You know, that sometimes happens. Like, I'm, I'm glad, because that is something that she would be expecting to happen. So, you know, your care, like, I added it to Serene, too, because Serene is used to people treating her like fucking garbage, because mercenaries are treated like trash where she's from. So, like, later on, when she's drunk, she gets all, like, drunk cry in a few stages, Ooh. and she's like, thanks for, like, being nice to me. Not a lot of people are, you know, better than that, but essentially the same thing. I think adding a couple of those lines can really help make your character seem like they weren't born the moment that the game started up and, and that they'll die the moment that you click new game. Unless you're Monica, in which case, well, you're, you're shit out of luck, honey. Yeah. Oh, man. Poor, poor I, I, Monica. Should, I, should, I should think about adding lines like that. I don't know. If pe- people don't ask. If you, I don't know if you put Maya on a table where like people don't just ask, oh, my God, how did they make babies? <laughs> Please ask you know, more interesting questions. Let's see. I do have some comments on art in general. Let's see. Please. She's got a very unique look to her, which is nice. Uh, her 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 dress, especially without the, like the shoulder pads, it does kind of look like pajamas. I don't know if that's intentional. I don't know. She just looks very snug really. and cozy. Looks like she got out of bed. Uh, let's see. I think she could use a couple more inward poses. I guess this is part of being a, a ruler and always putting on a show, but she's like, she's always staring ahead. She always like locking gazes with you. Yeah, that's probably because moving her eyes is an experience because, you know, all costumes. Costume. So I probably yeah. just didn't want to do it. But yeah, I could probably give her like. You could that. do some more eye movement. Mm-hmm. And just, you know, changing the eye shape in general. It's easier to iterate on it now than when you're making the bulk of the poses. Yeah. Uh, let's see. She had excellent forfeit dialogue. That's the other thing. She really engaged with the sexuality of the game really well. Yeah. She, she started nice. to get in, into the mm-hmm. Dom angle. Mm-hmm. Most yeah. definitely. She liked to give instructions, which I guess yeah. is only fair. Her butt pose. Again, I don't, think the, I don't think the curved crack quite worked out. It was a nice idea. It could still use some retooling. The butt was a little rushed, I will, I will say. So oh, you, you yeah, can't can, rush art. That's like I the most cannot. important pose in the whole game. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah. Also, I forgot that she has a little ribbon that's supposed to be around her bun, and I completely forgot that that's supposed to be there. So that'll be added. I don't think there. I don't. Uh, I'd post a gif of her, but yeah, I don't think there's going to be one. Oh no, there's only one image in existence. <laughs> Just like Galatea. Just like Galatea. Oh, Galatea. No, Galatea. Galatea I noticed that her, in her butt pose that her, her hair bun on top looks like a donut. Yeah. Galatea actually oh, um, had a revamp that was going to happen in 2016 that never officially happened. So she's got like some other art that is like technically from, you know, the same author, but it never made it to, you know, actual game. So she does have extra art. I will say her skin tone is really weird. I guess she's supposed to not really have any particular ethnicity because you want to move no. away from the whole oriental um, yeah. inspiration. Uh, she just seems like kind of greenish gray. She's like Indian or Indonesian. Yeah, right? the skin tone was a bit of area of contention in uh, working with her. I, I don't know if it's completely done. I am going to do like... Uh, a bit of an art revamp because there's details on the clothing that just should be there and isn't. So, uh, she has, I'm going to see if I can find the fucking image. Um, oh, geez. Uh, I searched up, uh, Tarando interactive fiction and guess what is fifth on the, uh, search bar. Me. Yeah. Yeah. So okay, is, um, is it Tarando or Tarandot? Um, I believe that so this is the pronunciation of like a Persian story transferred to an Italian story that they think is a Chinese story that was then taken by I'm not exactly sure what her author's ethnicity is, like for the interactive fiction and then an American's version of that. I believe it is dot. But anyway, that's the only image of her in existence. So she's got like these things on the side of her arm and the little the half dragon. circles. That's a crocodile. Down, down the front. What? Oh, 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 I thought you meant, yeah, no, a dragon on the front and all that. Yeah, yeah that would so make it look less like pajamas. Yeah, probably would. So I need, I wanted to make sure that the poses were all done before I did like, um, you know, uh, I assume that that's going to need some either post-production or pipelines. That's the word I was thinking of in order to make it happen. So I want to make sure that the poses looked OK before, you know, going all in on, on designing her. I guess this is what you were what you figured her angle kind of was. But she really lays into the player and the player specifically. Yeah, it wasn't lines like, to males. It was lines to the player. She's like, "You're just a fuck ass, aren't you? Stupid ass. Don't know how to play poker. <laughs> Wasting yeah. my goddamn time." Like, like I knew that I couldn't be that mean to like all the characters because like some of them are probably pretty smart or doing well, and you know you need a bunch of step lines for that. But the players just fucking stand there. It's like, geez, lady, I thought you were really funny. Yeah. I don't know why you hate me. Uh, stupid ass standing there. You know, I don't know. I, I felt like... Hey, hey, forget look. about it. It's Taranda. <laughs> I'm in the Empire State Building. <laughs> exactly. Um, climb, climb my hundred floors to get to my puss puss. <laughs> Watch out for them dear gators. They get you. Anyway. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah, she's she's got the Brooklyn rage. That's that's her. Uh, that's what it comes down to. She had a lot of nice custom legs that you know she used her her throne well. Like oh, this one in particular. Yeah. God, I need to I need to get on the boat with that. I am just gonna imagine the Brooklyn rage every time now. One pose. I mean, I mean you know, it's an Italian opera. One pose that really didn't work for me though, which is a shame because it's a great pose. Uh, is the is the leg cross because I can see what you're trying to do with her with her with her butt, mm -hmm. but it, it looks like really smushed up against the uh, the throne, and it looks all aliased, and it's not quite in proportion. Like it's really obvious that you edited this. 
and it just doesn't quite work. I th- that could use some cleanup on our on our ass cheek there. Yeah, like honestly, you could just take like the the standard Kisa K one from some other pose, and the curvature would work fine. Yeah, okay. But the the cross leg, the look is great. Yeah, look, the leg, it looks good. Just like Span says, the butt is a little bit positioned off, but it looks good. I, I wonder if I should make my character sit in a chair. I wonder if this is just going to become the new trend. I don't know. The chair positioning, I think I had a lot of benefit because her chair is like arms and it's super big. Like, I, I feel like in a normal ass chair, I think it gets hard because, you know, you don't have like arm rests and it's small and you can't like shift around too much. I don't know. It just, it just seems like it'd be harder. I wonder what, what like the posing, I mean, it'd be tougher because you'd need custom legs. You, you would need mm-hmm. them. But, uh,. I wonder how, like, the, the posing possibilities for, like, uh, one of those, like, super small, like, high-rise, like, kind of bar chairs where there's no armrests and there's, like, barely even a back to it, but you can, like, spin around. Not, not a stool. I don't know if you really know what I'm talking about. You think I do? Yeah. Um, maybe. I don't know. I, I, like, really I mean, have to, you'd have to make one in Kisuke first, but I, yeah, I think you could try. Just take some ovals. <laughs> Something like that. Yeah. Anyway, long story short, she's really funny. I enjoyed reading all her dialogue. You just keep hitting those fucking home runs, Dorian. Oh, thank uh, you. I want her to sit on my face. I got that. I really look forward. I've targeted her with Natsuki a little bit. I'm looking forward to seeing how she reacts to those. I'm also looking forward to seeing how, like, like targeting her with Leon goes or Adrian because they're gonna be like, ha, we can flirt with this princess. And then she's gonna be like, lol, you fucking retard. Also, wait, I I, I only briefly saw this. Does mm-hmm. she have a thing for like small penises? <laughs> no, she does not. She has a thing for embarrassed men. She oh. that is that is canon that she says like. Uh, it, it, humiliated men really turn me on, and then she's like, disregard that I said that. Um. But not for small penises. She she mostly just mocks them or says, eh, not worth my time. But but embarrassment does turn her on. Yeah, in men. Well, that's very disappointing because I'm not embarrassed at all. I want her to sit on my face. I can act embarrassed. Oh, no, Tyrande, don't sit on my face. I'd, no, please don't. I'd be so ah, embarrassed. I breathe from there. Yeah, I'm sure that would work, and she would not see through your disguise and facade at all. Now, what, kind of, what, what, kind, what kind of foundation for a marriage that is that I have to lie to her my whole life? All right, guys. I think that, you know, welcome, you know thanks for coming on, Dorian. Good to have you. Yeah, Absolutely. I, Unfortunately, I have to, you know, start making my way downtown, walking fast, places fast, <laughs> and I'm homebound. Homebound. <laughs> do, 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 But uh, thanks, everyone, for uh, coming to the podcast. And the mask. Good to have you on. Would you? Mm-hmm. We still have the April Fool's lightning round. Lamau, no, the joke is that I'm not going to comment on it. April Fool's is bad. Make real characters. Okay. Namas, before you Ooh, leave, I'd like mass. you to I'd like you to go through this list and give literal one word reviews. Bella. No. Word word association. Their pet. No. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> Dreamcatcher. No. <laughs> oh fuck off. I, I have like like look guys like if you want to do the thing like the April Fool's stuff like I I get it have fun but I, I'd rather you put some effort into something that was like a real character that was funny like I think like Wikipedia Magma Grunt Wikipedia Magma Grunt are all great I actually think Wario is quite funny I think Sandy and Tess were a really interesting experiment I think like I wish April Fools would become like experimental characters more so than like shit posts. Because I feel like that opens us to a lot of like cooler stuff. Personally, I also think like don't do things like Frisk and Friends. Like you know a character is banned, don't like include them even to make a joke out of it. Because we got like six or seven posts like, oh, I wish Frisk were in the game for real. It's like you're just baiting the mods, and it's like it's bad for him. Don't do that. I do think like April Fools is like an experiment of like, look, if you want to make a shit post, you can make a shit post. If you want to make like. A ser- more serious character, you can do that too. I, I think I think it's cool. I think that's cool. So, 
Uh, anyway, that's what I got. Cool. Well, Dorian, do you want to comment any, on any of the April Fool's characters? I mean, it says a lot, right? We ended with we ended with Tarandot, who's a funny character and like an actual character. Mm-hmm. You don't right. need to make yeah. April Fools to be funny. I mean, I could run down the list or whatever. I don't. I don't yeah. care for it. Go for it. Come on, uh, word okay. association. Let's make this a literal lightning round. There we go. All right, ready? All right, Dorian, you ready? We're gonna serve them up to you, okay? Do you want me to give like my actual thoughts, or do you want me to like lightning round it? Lightning round. Lightning round. Okay. <laughs> April Go. Already passed. No one gives a shit. All right, Bella. Uh, cute, but something about the uh, thing yeah, bugs done. me. Anyway. Don, Derpet. Uh, side character. Don, Dreamcatcher. Um, d- Blue Coins characters, but a bit more sexual. Shame. Fernando. Yeah. <laughs> Fernando. You have to watch the video first, but he's funny otherwise. Frisk and Friends. Frisky feel. Really kind of, they were really cool, and I liked a lot of the different stages. Pretty funny. You're too nice, Gruntilda. Gruntilda. I think I, I really wish that her transformed stage looked better than it does, but I respect how much the rhyming works. Done. Natasha. Um, she sometimes seemed a bit too like. Three, uh, two, two, one, done. Sandy cheeks. <laughs> Uncomfortable. Three, two. One, Sandy and Tess. Cute, but I mean, I'm not into that. I'm sorry. Wario. Wario. Wow. Wario. Number Just one. that one image of, of like Spider-Man uh, looking at the guy who's a pterodactyl and being like, but you could cure cancer. And he's like, Rifle. but I don't want to cure cancer. I want to make Wario for Spinati. Rifle. Uh, cute, but you got to know where she comes from, I think, to, for the joke to really land. April Fool, Cynthia. Rest in piss. Didn't play uh, Rest in Piss. Not funny, didn't laugh. <laughs> Wikipedia grunt. Actually, oh, funny. Don't, don't write about bestiality and pedophilia, kids. That's no yeah. bueno. Especially not at the same time. <laughs> You'll get yeah. banned. Also, don't write <laughs> about rape. Also bannable. Wikipedia grunt. I'm just going to talk about both of them. I think that it's really cute. I'm trying to swap gimmicks and, you know, it's, they're, they're funny together. Uh, I think they make a good pair. This is a good, this is a good April Fool's. Like, Wikipedia, Grunt, and Magotan are both good. In development, AOBA. I think the idea is fine. I don't think it lands where it needs to. All right, Easter egg round. Yeah, there's Easter costumes actually going on right now. Probably not yeah, by, go, uh, maybe by the time. Probably not by the time. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know, they're all bunnies. Yeah, they're all bunnies. No um, your show actually adds a lot of lines, and yeah. she's like an actual transformed into bunny, and I think that works, and I think that's cute. Um, that's yeah, a good use of source material. Ro- Rosa, yeah. and, Rosa and Cagliostro are both good, too. Like, I, they're yeah, both they're both good. They're all cute outfits. Uh, play, them, play them after the event if you want to. Yeah, they're, they're good. It's a good addition. All right. Good to have you on, Dorian. As ever, keep up Woo! the great work. Um, looking forward I'll to having a bunch of a body. Keep hitting those of... home runs, baby. Oh, baby. I will try. My, oh, my faith in you was not misplaced. You know what I think? Oh, baby, a triple. Not yet. You know what I think? I think, I think the Dungeon of Death is just, is just Tarandot's nickname for her nether. <laughs> I, think, I think all of those suitors have gotten a piece of her. She's got that vibe. Damn. Crush that. Push. So All right, guys. Well, as long as, okay. as you know, as long as it's a free entry, I'd like to get. I'd like to buy my ticket. She's a royal. I'm sure she cleans. I got a golden ticket. <laughs> Into Tarandot's asshole. Hey, whoa, whoa! We enter our dungeons through the front door. <laughs> Is there a back door to the dungeon of death? I try man with the how many people ever heard of closing the gods? Yeah. Ne- next to the mop. <laughs> All right. Good job, guys. Good cast. Good cast. Good cast. See you later. Bye-bye.